Just before we start, I just wanted to mention one thing quickly. Uh, Hellas and Co. and Sporting Club Hellas are independent missions. They're both run solely by myself. So if you could like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, it would mean the world. Check out hellasandco.com. And uh, without further ado, let's get into it. All right. Welcome back to Hellas and Homies. I'm here with a very coveted guest. Uh, before we start this, you should know uh, by now, if you're listening, that I have a very special affinity for football. Fiorentina diehard, Blacks and Redbacks icon if i do say so myself you ever watch the tiki toki i'm the sunday league kid i'm also here with a uh, star of tiktok australian football uh behind the b league as you may know it many other series where he covers shit that is not being covered by the entities that should be covering it i'm here with joe k how are you brother i'm very good mate thank you for having me on nah, very thank you very video. much we met at um australia cup yeah, yeah. mark Coney stadium oh, football heritage <laughs> the palace <laughs> shout out damien maury um, now, before we start this episode, I want to preface it with one thing. Like, I'm going to ask Joe general questions about Australian football. Obviously, add my own two cents in because that's what I do. I like to do that. I like to add my, you know, butt in on things. But um, for those listening that may not be too uh, familiarized with Australian football, I'm going to give you a quick breakdown and a few shout outs so you understand. So, before we start, a shout out to Charles Perkins, first Indigenous player, played for Everton overseas. Um, he's also one of the biggest advocates for Indigenous rights in this country. I'm an unbelievable footballer. Johnny Warren and Les Murray, two absolute icons of Australian football. Like I can't, I cannot emphasize enough what they did for the game, how they covered it, their passion for it. Uh, Les himself was from Hungary when Hungary were a much more dominant force in football, producing footballers like Puskas. Um, and yeah, just the, what those two have done. You have the Johnny Warren medal, which is basically like the MVP. And in due time, Les Murray will have his own trophy or medal for sure. The other one, Big Ange. At the moment, uh, you'll see Ange Postacoglu. Even if you're not a follower of football, you will know that Ange Postacoglu has Tottenham Hotspur, who historically don't win trophies. I don't think they've won one in 40 years. They haven't won, the, yeah, 40 or 50 years Something maybe. Like 60 maybe. Yeah, always around the top six. Never won anything. Spurs always bottle it. They'll be in Champions League final three years ago. Big Ange has them at the top of the Premier League table after in disarray last year with a completely new squad and they lost their star player, Harry Kane. Big Ange, serial winner. He's won Asian Cup for Australia. Had the Socceroos playing Tiki Taka for, I was fucking beautiful. And then you also had um, him winning in Japan and Celtic. He dominated. Next one up, three more. Sam Kerr. What more else is there to say? Female football, the goat of football, female football for me anyway, but the goat of Australian football, not even close. Uh, what is What she's done in her field is just ridiculous. Tim Cale just for being the star boy, really, and Harry Kill as well. Those two uh, really put football on the map in the early 2000s and they were part of a team that got us to the 2006 World Cup and, as we all know, Timmy got us to the round of 16. We reversed the Italians and, no, Fabio Grosso did not take a dive. Lucas Neal went to the ground far too early. What an idiot. Shout out, Lucas Neal, if you want to come on the pod. Always welcome. Then, last but not least, someone that doesn't get mentioned enough is Raleigh Rasic who was the coach who got us to the Australia, the first ever World Cup in 1974 and coached a bunch of different of the old NSL, which is the clubs before the A-League. Um, coached a bunch of them. Absolute legend. He passed away this year. Long live Raleigh Rusic, man. And yeah, before we do this, Australian football, as like a quick breakdown, I'm sure you'd agree, has the ability to take on global entities. I think like we saw the other day, we lost 1-0 to England, right? England this morning put on a clinic against my Italy. My Italy is in disarray. But at the same time, to do that is no easy feat, no matter what state Italy are in. Australia genuinely, I know it's a friendly, put England to the sword. Like we should have we should have drawn or beat them, I reckon. Do you yeah, watch definitely. it? Yeah, I watched it. Got up uh, Saturday, it? Saturday. 5.45 or something yeah. like that. Yeah, no, we were on top. I reckon we could have had one or two that first half there. But um, yeah. yeah, no. Jordy Boss and Conor Metcalf showed like <laughs> yeah. they're of a quality. Oh, yeah. They're not playing in currently. It's because we don't get enough eyes on us because we don't do marketing well. Nonetheless, um, we are severely underfunded by the government. We're like the 10th most funded sport, even though we're the most played sport. Make that make sense. And kids who are playing in the NPL, which is like representative football, it's like that level of uh, rep. Instead of free rego, they're made to pay upwards of $2,000 to rego for the season to play in the NPL, where you get your chances to go on to be a professional footballer. This is what's wrong with Australian football as a whole. And for all that, we get to the last point. The A-League is hasn't been around that long. It's almost two decades now, only 20 years. The A-League is a bunch of just franchise clubs owned by a bunch of private owners who are fucking pretty close to billionaires most probably, right? The A-League is just a bunch of franchises. Before that, what you had was the NSL, the National Soccer League. 
before that, it was just state leagues, but the NSL was compri- uh, made up of ethnic clubs. So Marconi Stallions is an Italian club. Because we are a country of immigrants, we tend to forget that in the mid uh, 20th century. These uh, communities, for something to do, keep them out of trouble, blah, 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 whatever it may have been, uh, formed football clubs and social clubs on the back of it. And uh, so you have like South Melbourne, which is Greek. Um, you have Marconi Stallions, which is Italian. You have Brunswick Juventus, which is Italian. You have Bonnie Rig Eagles, which are Serbian. You have Sydney United, which are Croatia. Melbourne Knights, which are Croatian. So you have these such a plethora of teams that were once the biggest teams. South, South Melbourne's the most, uh, what is Successful it? Successful club in Oceania. Oceania. In Australia, probably. Yeah, Maybe yeah. CFC now, but very close. South Melbourne up there. Yeah. And for those listening, Sydney FC owner and the A-League founder are the same person. Make that make sense. <laughs> so with all that, we're about to head into a national second division, which is revi- reviving, um, for lack of a better word, it's reviving the ethnic clubs. They're in a pool right now to see who gets through the last thing. And the only person that's even covered it in any, de- any depth is a man across from me. So with all that, we'll get into the pod now, but I thought that'd be some vital information. There's so much to read about so much more to cover unfortunately i gotta stop talking at some point (laughs) so without any further ado joe how the fuck did all this start how did it start like is in making making content or football the passion for football yeah football first okay so people should probably know grew up in a country town called milford in this town there is not much eventually moved to orange where it is rugby league rugby union football everyone plays it but it's not covered in any way at all. You know, we'll play football on the weekend, but then we'll go to the pub and watch the rugby league when we get to the pub. No one talks about it. I'd be lucky if one of my teammates supported an Australian club, whether it's A-League, NPL, or anything. But then this year, I decided to move down to Sydney. And with that came a lot of opportunities to get out, experience the culture, fall in love with the game to that next level, where I really want it now to just grow to a point where we haven't seen before. Um, But in terms of making content, yeah, it just started from there wasn't really anyone doing it. And I saw a space to just get in there, get stuck in and start making videos. Originally started with the A-League because that's just kind of didn't really have a think about doing NPL content because no one's doing A-League. Then, you know, that's kind of what your mind goes to first. So, but yeah, ever since then, kept growing uh, and now covering all levels of the game. Socceroos, Matildas, NPL, A-League. If there's football, I'll cover it. So, yeah, yeah, that's mad. Yeah. For those listening, for where Joe's from, there's a club called Bathurst 75, which was formed by Hungarians, I believe. I believe so, yeah. So and big club back in the day. Big club. Bathurst was huge. And they had players like Archie Thompson come through there, Ryan Grant, and the Abonyi crew. The Ab- one of the Abonyi's, Attila, went on to play in the 1974 World Cup up front for us, one of the greatest strikers of all time in Australia. And Jack Hunter plays for him. Shout out to you, Rooney. <laughs> Former Redbacks goalkeeper. That's the alumni, bruh. Um, <laughs> But yeah, Bathurst obviously takes this course. You move down to Sydney and when you start making content, what are the series? What are all the series that you've done or like the coverage? So a lot of, like originally, like I said, a lot of A-League stuff. I'm talking from kit reviews to ranking teams, predictions. Then we get into the NPL stuff, which personally, definitely my favorite stuff to film. Yeah. Easily the most rewarding. Um, so I've done behind the B-League, chasing cup sets where I all based around the Australia Cup. Um, and that's probably about it for the NPL section. But yeah, a lot of a lot of A League Australian football, big a lot of content during the Women's World Cup, which went crazy. Some of my videos over like five million views. One of them. Oh fuck! What one? Uh, it was just it was just a short clip from within the stadium, just filming around. Like oh, it was yeah, my yeah. seat was like ten dollars, so I just filmed it and it ended up blowing up like six million views, which is just crazy. But that was a massive opportunity that you know if you're creating football, you just got. Yeah. Just go in there, put it up, and yeah, it went massive. That's mad. Yeah, yeah, big stuff. Dude, the Women's World Cup was something, eh? Oh, take me back right now. Yeah. <laughs> take me back to Sam Kerr scoring that goal. Dude, let's talk about it. So, Women's World Cup. Yep. Crazy, eh? Did you think, Jack and that just sent a message to FIFA like we know what we're doing? As in like hosting, in yeah. terms of hosting? Yeah, because it was it's the biggest Women's World Cup that's ever been. Probably the biggest sporting event ever in Australia. I think it... I think by the end of it, it got bigger than the 2000 Olympics or very close. Just given that 11 million people watched that game against England. I think we forget about the Olympics is um, 
you take away the swimming and the running, it's yeah. not as viewed as one may think. Yeah. You reckon it's easily bigger then? Football is. Yeah. yeah. Football is, yeah. Oh, of country, course, yeah, yeah. Like there'd be people in the back ass of Tajikistan watching it. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying about Like it's true. Yeah, no, it's, it's true. 100%. Yeah. There'd yeah, be yeah, people yeah. in like a bar in the back of Tajikistan watching the Socceroos England game. Yeah. Like yeah. It, it just transcends globally. What's that? 11 million views. Yeah, five viewers. Million. That's in Australia. That's like, that's yeah. just <laughs> imagine the rest of the world. What England. are we? We're 26... Towards maybe 30 million people. One in three people in this country watched it. Yeah. That's what they counted. I reckon it was close to one in two. Yeah, because that didn't include live sites or pubs or anything like that. And I was I was at Allianz Stadium watching the game. We have a half full Allianz yeah. Stadium, like 20,000 people in there watching it. So that's man. Yeah, it was in crazy time. But yeah, no, that was that's probably that's my favorite time as a football fan in this country, I would say. Yeah. Above the Asian Cup, just only because I was a bit older, I could experience it more, like go yeah. out drinking with friends and stuff like that. Fully get around it rather than just get mum to drive me to the game and yeah, drive yeah. me home afterwards, you know? <laughs> so let, let's go through the fucking, the journey. Righto. So Island game, what'd you think? I, would like, I thought we were pretty crap <laughs> that first game. Yeah. I um, could have went either way. I watched it at the Lapo, yeah. which is like our pub. Yeah, um, yeah. And there was in front of the TV. So like Lapo's like got its main, so it's got like when you walk in, pokies to the left. Then you got like a dining area. You walk, then there's like a main bar. Then you walk down, there's like nine TVs that make up one screen. And there's yeah. like a general sitting area. And then you have the back deck. Yeah. When I watched the Matildas game, the island game, there was five of us sitting in front of the TV and around 20 blokes, just pub larrikins, like yeah, yeah. Um, geriatrics, if, for lack of a better word, <laughs> just sitting there. They were just there, but yeah. they watched the game with us and they and eventually they realized, fuck, the Matildas were playing. They got into it. So I'd say around 30 to 50 people max at the Lapo. Yeah. So anyway... The island game, I thought going into it, I was like, oh, Katie McCabe most probably do us in on that left wing. Yeah. Even though Ellie's a star girl. Ellie grew up at the AAS with one of my mates, Henry. Oh, yeah, okay. Like he's always said, like, I remember when we were younger, she was the talk of town. Like she was a freak. But like, mm. I don't know, man. I went into that. I thought we played shit. Yeah, I did too. I 100%. And like it was just so much. Well, actually it wasn't yet because Sam Kerr got ruled out like an hour before the game. So yeah. there wasn't that much focus on that yet. But the performance when we got in there, I was like, oh, we could be out in the group here if we're not careful. Yeah. And then the next game, which if you want to get into that. Yeah, Nigeria. <laughs> then uh, I was really panicking. That yeah, game. I didn't get to watch that. Um, yeah. I was at the live site in Darling Harbour for that. Oh, yeah. No, that was the Canada game. Sorry. I was, I don't know where I was at. That. I think I was just at a pub. It was on a Saturday game. night. It was yeah, weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think the country caught on. No, no, no. Yeah, not yet. And then we go down to Melbourne. Yeah. We play Canada. Canada are like a top 10 easily. Yeah, they, they were gold medals, gold medalists at the Olympics in Tokyo. So yeah, they were top dogs. Like. Yeah, so for those that are listening, Olympics is under 23s, but you can have three senior players in there and Canada had a jack squad. Well, that, that's that's men's, but the women's is everyone. Everyone's oh, allowed in it. Fuck. Yeah, we had like Sam Kerr, Rasso, they're all playing in that. I didn't even know that about the Olympics, eh? Hey? Yeah, it's because well, FIFA don't want the Olympics to become bigger than... Like yeah, the World Cup, yeah, yeah, yeah. but they've like so that's why they put the restrictions on the men's. Yeah, but the women's they, well, like if we're being honest, yeah. they don't really no, see it. Pumps as, the game. Yeah, get into that level. But I think they might introduce that soon though, because the women's World Cup is just going to keep growing and growing yeah. from now on. Um, we played Canada. Haley Rasso kind of like steps up. Yeah, because we've kind of been waiting for her to do that. Yeah, Haley Rasso signed to Real Madrid. You, if you're listening, you know who Real Madrid is, <laughs> and yeah, Rasso finally stepped up. I thought Caitlin Ford had like a real quiet, like some of those girls had like real quiet campaigns, eh? Yeah, like the, probably the, like the big stars. Like Claire Hunt was, I have Claire Hunt as our best player and did not expect that at Wall. all coming into Wall, the Wall, eh? Yeah, and just so composed, we, like the touches, the turns. Bro, we missed her against England, was it? When did Ponkinghorn come on? Um, That was because, no, Alana Kennedy got a concussion. Oh, yeah. So she went off and Ponkinghorn came in. We as missed a partner. her against England. Yeah. Yeah. Big time. We'll get to that. Yeah. Um, so we've versed Denmark, uh, Canada. We went 4-0 out of nowhere. That was cool. Yeah. Van Eggman kind of stepped up as well. That layoff to Rasso was like. Oh, yeah, in the box. Just yeah. Like, Katie Van Eggman's a DM, but she can play second striker, which is pretty cool. But <laughs> in rugby league terms, hmm, like a second <laughs> rower goes out to 5'8", like Wade Graham-ish, you know, just second row, just <laughs> plug in at number six, does the job. But, um, yeah, Van Eggman's dad's Gary Eggman and um, – he was a freak as well. And then, so we get to Denmark. And as you will most probably know, Matt Leckie got the dub for us over Denmark last year at 20, um, 2022 World Cup. 
So we have like this history with them and Mary Fowler, who is obviously pretty. So she already had like all the raps on her <laughs> and like, she's obviously like Mary Fowler's like star girl already. If you know Australian football, like she's at yeah. Man City. She's this like, she's half Papua New Guinea and half Irish. Like very, that's very Australian, right? Like just this oh, yeah, just weird a mix, mix of yeah. every country in the world <laughs> into a national team. Yeah. And so this, you know, this girl, Mary Fowler picks up the ball playing as a false nine almost and a proper 10 finally turns around puts it on her left foot releases caitlin ford down the left it's almost like a carbon copy of matt lecky's goal yeah we beat denmark that's cool oh no maybe van Egmond was against she was she was she was a second goal layoff to rasso in the box wasn't it was that against denmark or yeah, that yeah. was Denmark because I was at that game and I remember it was at my end. Yeah, and yeah, she had yeah. it, and I was like, oh, oh, and then she cut across and. Dude, Rasso what did Rasso? Do? No, Rasso got one on a cut back. Yeah, against Dem, uh, against Canada, she was falling backwards, I think, and it was came it? across the box, and then she just had a swack at it back across goal. Yeah, I think so. I don't know. That Canada game was like I was. It was, it was just so much energy. Like yeah. I can't remember. I can't remember it now. All I remember was. Was that the Mary Fowler one where she just shanks it and it comes off the post and then goes in? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah, I don't know. There's so much to remember. Then we get to France. And France are no joke. They take their women's, women's football so, so seriously. Yeah. Olympic Lyon, one of the biggest women's clubs in the world. The biggest. Yeah, the I, biggest. Yeah, I, probably. Yeah. A powerhouse. Um, and they have a girl called Wendy Renard who people made a meme out of. She is different looking. But Wendy Renard is like this. Bro, Wendy Renard's bigger than you and I easily. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you should see because I watched her against Jamaica, and her on corners against oh, even Jamaica, like, no, yeah. no small people like yeah, <laughs> she was towering over everyone. I was yeah, like, oh. she's um same thing as Van Dyke, um Suriname, like Nash. Oh he's, yeah, yeah, but chose yeah. France. Um, same thing as like Van Dyke, one out them. They're from Suriname and South America, but um, yeah. Wendy Renard, she's no joke. Uh, Diani, their striker. She reminds me of Dribble Cissé. She kind of like had like, you know, all the dreads and <laughs> yeah, shit going yeah, no, and like that, yeah. flashy footballer. Um, yeah, we come up against them. Fuck, man. I didn't... It goes to penalties. It was such a tight game. Yeah, it was. I'm trying... Like, the... That game for me is just the penalty shootout. That's what I yeah, remember because yeah. that took so much energy to focus and then went on for so long. I just completely... Everything else is just a blur. Yeah. I don't remember it at all anymore. And at this point... I'm at the pub yeah. and I'd say at the Lapo, it's gone to around 150 people. And I'm yeah. with Jed Drew on the back deck. Shout out Jed, <laughs> shout out Bye, shout out Flat, shout out, um, I think the other guy was Adrian. And we're like standing, we're actually standing on like the tables as like it's been shot. Yeah. Just filming. And um, Arnold saves and then Arnold takes. The thing with a goalkeeper is you never, they shouldn't take a penalty after they've saved one. Yeah, too high on the other Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. The, the, watch this. Yeah, the, it, you got to be like Edwin Van der Sar to like have that <laughs> level of composure, or like Petr Cech. Like, yeah. It, but national pride is something else. Like, you just ride it so hard, eh? And um, yeah, Arnold steps up, misses. France step up, they miss. Arnold save. Arnold was a wall in that. She was freakish eh, in that. Like, yeah, yeah. and then say like three, I think three or four penalties. Yeah, and then Courtney Vine steps up, buries it. Country raps, so fucking cool, eh? <laughs> like I remember yeah. just running inside to Lapo that some boys I went to school with and we were just straight in went like into Ole Ole, like just going like just nuts and the pub joined in and I was like on a high for hours. Like I was just, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That second win, you're just yeah. going out afterwards. And I'm literally like going, I'm driving home thinking like, fuck, I wonder if BCF Penrith has got flares. Like if we beat England. <laughs> like, <laughs> They'd be all sold out yeah, by now. Yeah, yeah. Right, 110%. I know a guy who can get flares. So I was like. Thinking, I was already like about to send a message like for the England game because if we won, I knew it'd be like country will stop. Oh yeah, public holiday, get it ready, Albanese. Yeah, what a dog should have rewarded it anyway. That fucked them up. But um, yeah, I remember that, and I'm just going like, oh dude, I remember just that feeling, eh? <laughs> like that, bro. How crazy is it as an Australian to go like, oh, we could, we could win a World Cup, yeah, yeah, on home soil out of anywhere, yeah. like yeah. I, you don't even get to the words World Cup in my head. It was just oh, we could. Like, yeah. like I'm driving home. I think I've got a few of the boys in the car. I'm just saying to them, like, we can. Like, we can. We can. We're playing way better than we think. Because yeah. I think the level of Sam Kerr is Australia has misjudged for the level of the rest of the team. What do you mean? Like, she's, like, so far ahead or, like? Y yeah, so, the re like, Australia as, like, a general viewing goes, oh, the Matildas like a top five team. They're not. Yeah. 
when you look at our development, like our pathways compared to the rest of the world now, yeah, it's like we're not there, but there's something about it, man. There's something yeah. about the Matildas and the Socceroos. I don't know. It's just that DNA. I know people bag it out all the time, but Aussie DNA no, is no. like a... 110%. It's yeah. Australia. It's pride. And we yeah. come together as a nation. And I always say the most beautiful thing about what the Matildas and Socceroos do that no one can ever replicate is the country comes together. Yeah. And like I was saying this about... Because people were arguing when I compared to Caitlin Ford and Lecky Go on TikTok. And I was like, dude, you're missing the point. <laughs> the whole point is there's a few similarities. On the left, went through a defender's legs. It was against Denmark. We beat him, blah, blah, blah. I was like, but more importantly, the country just came together. For like three seconds, everyone in this fucking country was on the same wavelength Level, yeah. of enjoyment. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, you're not going to get that. Like, Sorry, other sports, but rugby league, I'm, you're not going to get that. No, no, rugby 100%. League world no, there's no other yeah. sport in the world. No, no, no. Yeah. 100%. That like brings a country like that. And then- yeah, and then France, it was the same thing. It was just like, no matter who you were, fucking who you vote for, what where you're from, like you just everyone's just going like <laughs> Matilda's could. And you have bro, you have people who came to this country as much as a year ago, like going uh, like got their citizenship within the last twelve months, and they're wearing a green and gold jersey. Going <laughs> like, I think the, like I want the Matilda's to win it. Come up against England, I think you and I most probably in hindsight could recognize England are out of our. Oh yeah. Like if if you took everything like out of it, the emotion. Hemp or Kemp? Uh, Lauren Hemp out on the left. Freak. Yeah, She's Lauren fun. James. But oh, I know she was suspended. She's, She's going to be the best player in the world. I've been watching her a bit in the WCL this year. Yeah. She's. You know what I don't like? You know, I, I I like her, but I don't. She's too nonchalant sometimes. Oh, like too casual. With yeah. Her. She's like a brother though, because I'm a Chelsea fan, and yeah. like there are so many similarities. Like you can tell they grew up playing against each other in the backyard and stuff. Yeah. Just the way they play and. How cool is that for Reese? Yeah, it's not real. Yeah. I mean, she's probably better than him now because he's not even on the pitch anymore. But yeah, he's injured, eh? Yeah. Like yeah. Every week. But that's okay. We can leave oh, Chelsea yeah. out of this for now because yeah. it's um, painful. But yeah, England just have this like plethora of talent. What's the name of the back? Millie Bright. She's built like a brick yeah. shit house. Like. Yeah. Uh, but in the France game, Alana Kennedy got concussed and it didn't get talked about at all because with football, people don't necessarily understand like the rest, like general fans. See a centre back out and they go, oh yeah, like it's fine, like it's yeah, we'll just put it's the not Sam Kerr, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not Mary Fowler. So and I remember saying like this is bad, like Polking was not going to do a job against England. <laughs> Unfortunately, she didn't. She's that old, like poor thing. But we come up against England, we just got our tactic. Yeah, well, that happens when you verse Serena Beegman or whoever is. she's yeah. the best women's football coach in the world. She'll take a men's team. She'll be the first. Yeah, well, there's the, I've seen some people calling for her to take the men's English team, which. Yeah. I mean, it will go one of two ways, but I, I reckon she. Yeah, I reckon they should. She'll be the first woman to take a men's job. Yeah, yeah. I think England because they qualify for Euros this morning. They won't let him go. Yeah, that's true. Like at Euros, he does well. It's um World Cups that he str England struggles in general, <laughs> but I feel like she could take on a national team. Like say the du Italy don't need it because we got Spalletti, but say the Dutch failed. Yeah, I feel like because she, she's Dutch, I'm pretty sure. Dutch, yeah. Dutch. Well, just take her nation, whatever it may be. Yeah. If it's Dutch charge. or German and yeah. they're struggling, she could easily just slot in and just say, fuck it, we're already down. We'll, Bring her in. See yeah. What you can do. Like we, if, we, if we haven't made a World Cup, we can't go much lower. Yeah. Have a crack. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I we just got our tactic and like Millie, like we just, the way we played was just so stupid, man. Like I remember just sitting there and we're just sitting so far back. <laughs> Do you remember that? Like watching Yeah, just in, it was just oh. inviting it. We weren't trying to keep the ball at all. Oh. and So disheartening to watch back because I watched it back after. Yeah, I haven't oh. been able to. <laughs> I haven't been able to touch right. it. Just Gustafsson got it so wrong. But there was one point, Benny's in the room across. We're at the lapo and I was sitting on like, the back deck's pretty big. Yeah. And I'm sitting on like one end of the back deck with like two of my friends. And we're like watching the TV from afar and Ben's in like the other corner. I'm telling you, like Caitlin Ford would have scored as well. I think. Yeah, I reckon. Whoever was on the left, they, they were that open. But Sam's running from halfway. And then I remember as she's like taking another stride, another stride. I remember like as she's lined up the shot <laughs> and she's hit it. I got up straight away before it's even gone in and go, fuck. Like I just started screaming. It's like, go. And then she just ran over to the boys. And bro, we're going nuts. Like everyone, yeah. like a lot of other people on the deck, they were like cheering, but they were kind of like sitting down. And in this corner, there's just like 13 boys just fuck. My mate John, he wanted, bro, the opening game, he didn't want anything to do with it. He said, why the fuck would I watch that? Tigers are on or something, right? Yeah. West Tigers. <laughs> anyway, come to that game. John is like grabbing Ben and I and he's like screaming. He's like, we're going to win the fucking World Cup. 
<laughs> dude. That, that's you know what, what I mean? it did. Like that was the whole country tra- though. Like so many people. Yeah. And there's just, I remember that goal, man, so clearly. Just the way she hit it. Like we were speaking about it before. To, for anyone that doesn't watch football, to hit a ball on the run at full pace, you can easily make it, if you're watching, this is easy. You can make it slowly go on an upward trajectory for a lot of power. Like if you put your laces to the ball. But to make a ball dip, you can often do that on a dead ball, like a free kick. But to make a ball dip on the run off the ground is stupid. You can do it on a volley. Yeah. quite. A, that's how you volley. But like to make a ball like, bro, that technique is stupid to do oh, that. Oh, yeah. And she's doing it against probably the best goalkeeper in the world in the women's game, Mary Earps. Yeah. In goal. <laughs> From oh, like 30 oh, yards oh. out. And just, I reckon it was 40. Oh, yeah. Well, so far probably out. Probably yeah. And no, Sammy just. Oh man, that was like the moment because I, you and I know what Sam's got. Like she's yeah. won everything, but it was a matter of like I want the country to see what like she's about. Like yeah, I want, they hadn't seen anything yet I from want, her. Yeah, I want the pub drunks that have never watched the Matildas game to go. Oh, that's what they're fucking talking about. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 you know what I mean? Like, yeah. they sit here in the newspaper and they have no idea what they're watching. Like, and then, why are we talking about this chick's calf for like yeah. <laughs> every day for the last month? And then they go, oh, yeah. shit. Yeah, that calf's pretty valuable. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, and just that was like the moment where it was like, oh, yeah, Sam Kerr's done it. She's immortalized. Yeah. She'll have a statue, I reckon. Oh, yeah. She's the, she's the best footballer the country's ever yeah. produced, men or women. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I put that on TikTok. I copped it. Oh, I, you know, I've, I've said it as well before. And like, Yeah, I copped it. I'm going to get that up quickly to portray to the people. It's like it's like when they added um, women into FIFA this year. <laughs> Have you been playing the new FIFA? Yeah, it's great. It's good fun. You can upgrade. You can upgrade. Yeah, Evolutions. Play, yeah. yeah, I'm not interested. Eh? Oh, I haven't okay. played FIFA in two years. I've got to stay off it. Hey, what about pro clubs? Surely you get on pro clubs. <laughs> I've been thinking That's about peak, it. Peak FIFA, that. But nonetheless, we, um, we crashed out. To England, and then England went on to play Spain. Yeah. And got schooled. <laughs> Big time. Yeah. Big time. No chance in that game. But you know what helps Spain? Them getting schooled. Yeah. I think Spain, yeah, I think Spain losing to Japan 4-0. Oh, without them. that? Yeah, 100%. I don't know if they win the World so did Cup. They, did they end up versing Japan in the knockout as well? No, Japan got beat by Sweden, so they didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I put up a post that read, Sam Kerr, Australia's greatest ever footballer, Perth's greatest athlete, straight up baller. Respect the name, the journey and the levels. Last night she added another trophy uh, to her mansion-like cabinet. Oh, and she scored the winner too. She's been that striker for a minute. Never short of a goal, never short of a moment. It's short of shit, never short of greatness. She now has a total of 300 goals in 462 games, not to mention on her list of trophies. At a team level, she has three FA Cups, three EPL, like the equivalent of the EPL in the women's, Two Cup of Nations, an Asian Cup, and a W League. Individually, she has five Australian Women's Football of the Year, two of the American like top division, which is uh, I'd say like top three. You'd have like France, England, America. Yeah, America. When she was playing in America, that's probably like the top. Yeah, yeah, that time. Yeah. Um, two Golden Boots, PFA Players of the Year, which is basically like the MVP of the play. That's the most valuable, I reckon. If yeah. you if your player if the That's players when say they vote for you isn't it? Yeah. For the players yeah yeah not when it's voted by like some old geriatrics just yeah. like all around the table for that played forty years ago when it's voted by the current players like this is the best player to play against that's the most valuable yeah 100%. I believe um and most importantly she has a key to the city of Perth and a medal of order in Australia and then I wrote I could go on for days but my words would never do justice she is by far and away Australia's greatest ever cannot wait for the women's World Cup where she delivers a famous World Cup win on home soil. Oh, you posted this before the World Cup. Yeah, 15th yeah, right. of May. Um, I thought this was like after that goal, you just quickly write it out, like all your thoughts and feelings. Nah, <laughs> nah, nah, time, nah, right? nah, nah, nah. So, bro. Um, yeah, let me, let me hear what they've been so saying. So this is some of the comments that like people face. Um, KL exists. I'd even take Goodwin as Australian's goat over her. Said, I love Craig, but he failed overseas. Sam has just won a third FA Cup. Remember the argument is relative to competition before you continue. Um. <laughs> And then some go, and then some bloke goes who with a skull, and I said Sam Kerr, our only chance at World Cup glory, but sure sick one, Mark Shackers. Good to see you support your own country. Again, who? I'm sure the five watchers are thrilled. Eat fuck, eat that fucking <laughs> bad hell, man. Uh, I forgot to come back to all this. Hey, eh? um, she's great, but Cahill solos. <clears throat> um, it's it's not comparable. At, like, not in terms of comparing Sam to Tim Cahill. 
like what they both achieved is mm. not anywhere near the same level. Yeah, hundred ten. Like she's been in the top three of the Ballon d'Or for the last three seasons. Australians yeah. never sniffed it. Mass Longo, Longo do you Longo once. <laughs> when he was playing in like League One or something. Fuck, how good is it to have him back? Oh, he was good yeah. this morning as well against New Zealand. Did we win? Uh yeah, two 0 Oh good, two good. Nil. I know. I love my Atero brothers, but not when we're versing them. Um but then in the in the same in the same thing, there's a lot of people just making laughing faces, but there's a lot of people just going, Curse the goat. I completely agree. Um and then Ollie goes, Can we not argue Sam Kerr and Tim Kelly but best ever to play for Perth? And then I don't know, there's just a lot of comments. Um and then this bloke goes, Australia's greatest women footballer compared to Australia men, she's not even top a thousand. And then I said she doesn't play men. Like I can't, uh, yeah, That's bro. Like they can't get over that. They can't get over the fact that this is a woman and she plays football. Yeah, and she doesn't verse men, but she would be terrible if she played men. Like they just can't fathom it. They can't put it together. It's, it's like it's so stupid, man. It's so stupid. And then, um, just so many people just, oh man, some of the comments as well. There's folded comments, but some of them are so vile. And I'm just looking through them now, and just like, yeah, there's, um, and then he goes. Uh, some guy called Atticus goes, Kale did what Kerr dreams of. To which I replied, like, what exactly? And Matt said, play at the top level of the game. What the <laughs> fuck is that meant to mean? Um, but yeah, so there's just like, I don't know. And then I commented, the principle of context has lost you all and it's nuts. If she delivers a World Cup to this n- nation, you all owe, all owe her an apology. Matt said, if she delivered us a World Cup, I doubt anyone would notice. You're an idiot. 11 million <laughs> viewers, one in three people in this country. It's not even counted properly. Probably one in two. Deedoid. And then Corbin said, these guys have no respect, even though Sam Kerr is literally doing it at the highest level she can possibly play at. No Australia has come close. Shout out Corbin. Man, I'm always I'm always open to two sides of an argument. Yeah. I like um I'm very open to discussion and discourse, but man, that kills me. <laughs> but that's the women's game. It's come a long way. And I was very happy. I have two nieces under two. And I was very happy to know that like if they want to choose football, they have a clear path of what mm. success looks like. Yeah, absolutely. Well, look. From my personal perspective, came into the World Cup, my girlfriend and my sister couldn't care less. I've tried for years to get them involved. My girlfriend was crying after that England game and my sister's now a member of an A-League club that shall not be named because I refuse to call her my sister anymore. Yeah, Put that together, if you will. Eastern suburbs. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. Um, now, let's get into the nuts and bolts, I should say. Ben, how long have we been going for? Oh, fuck. <laughs> That's so quick. <laughs> Holy shit. All right. Um, so I mentioned it earlier in the podcast, National Second Division. Uh, no promotion. and rele- So the, the the whole thing they failed to mention at like a – I felt like they kind of covered it up was there's no promotion relegation until 2030. Yep. Which you reminded me at the Marconi game. Because yep. I was thinking like – I thought it was only one or two years, no promotion relegation. Well, that are you talking about from to the A-League? Yeah. Yeah. So there's a couple problems with that because the A-League clubs... Franchises. And they have licenses to be in the top yeah. division until 2034. Isn't that sneaky in the contracts, hey? Yeah. And well, they're adding... They, I mean, they're adding new t- two new teams next year, Canberra and Auckland. I've heard nothing. Well, Auckland. Auckland have got... Uh, they're not confirmed, but they've got the owner sorted. It's going to be the guy who owns Bournemouth in the Premier League. Oh, what's his name? Um, I don't know his name, but he's got American sports teams as well, I think. I don't know. He's, no, he's cool. He's cool. Yeah. Bournemouth yeah. fans love him. Oh, okay. Well, that's. I mean, that's good for the league, but... Yeah, because he's dropped money at Bournemouth when you think about it. Yeah. He's brought in some, like, players over the years where you like... Like Jefferson Lerma and shit like that. That's a big signing for, like, Bournemouth. Yeah. They're meant to be in the third division. Oh, yeah. They're so, like, like... Auckland, for those listening, Auckland, uh, before Wellington, were by far the biggest club in... Um, Who, Auckland? Yeah, New Zealand. Yeah, well, they still were still massive. Yeah, still massive. Auckland City. Um, yeah. So, and then what? Who's the other club? Uh, Canberra. Oh yeah, Canberra. Canberra. But there hasn't been any news about an owner for that, which has got me a bit worried because the thing is, twenty five million they were asking for a license. Oh, that's a lot of money. It is for the A League, like other leagues. That's like no, it's pennies. pennies it's but pennies. in the A League, to ask someone to pay that much money. They kind of have to offer them that security a of sponsor wouldn't be more than seven figures a year, I reckon. Yeah, probably not. Depends on you have to you have low to get a seven good owner. figures if it is. Like there's there's some good owners in the A League with lots of backing, but you're gonna need someone 
Yeah, it's you're willing money. to like you're not going to make money at a football club. Everyone, yeah, everyone knows that. Um, Dude, Uncle Rocco, come over, Fiorentino guy. I love him, yeah, man. Yeah. Rocco, bro. <laughs> we're we're in such crazy form. For those who are looking at the kits, this is inspired by the Fiorentina Nintendo famous kit. Bati Goal used to wear it. Now I wear it. But yeah, same player. Yeah, basically same performances. Black <laughs> and red backs. Um, but yeah, anyway, so 2034 is when they've got license till. So there's no promotion and relegation in that sense, but the A-League did come out middle of the year mm. with an idea that's not official, but they sort of were open to the idea of creating an A1 and an A2. So they would look to expand the league through clubs like Auckland, Canberra, but then also potentially add the best teams from the National Second Division into that. It's so problematic. It's, oh, it's because... The, the problem with Australian football is there's so many different fronts trying to unite everyone under the one umbrella is so hard. And it's even harder now because the A-League isn't run by Football Australia. Yeah. It's run by the APL. The National Second Division is run by Football Australia. So you, you're going to butt heads on so many issues. If Football Australia look to implement relegation, they'll have legal battles with A-League clubs. Like It's either going to be they come together and work or we might not see promotion relegation till those license deals expire in 2034. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. But like that that model the A-League we're talking about, so it would be like two leagues with promotion and relegation, yeah. so like 12 in each and then up and down, but they wouldn't be able to go further down than that second league. Yeah. Yeah. Which isn't exactly what the second division is aiming to achieve. Which, yeah. Yeah. Ideally, we have a pyramid. Ideally, we do have a pyramid, but there are challenges, especially in a country like Australia. Like it's not like England, like, you're flying yeah. six hours to Perth for a game. Like, <laughs> not say it's challenges, but I think you know what you've got to. Sometimes you just got to go for it and try it and try new things. And like yeah. football right now, the A League, it's kind of it's been stagnant for a long time. And I think you need something fresh to come in the mix. Yeah, second division next year, very exciting. A lot of people keen for it. So yeah. But a lot of challenges come with that as yeah, well with just, some of these clubs. But uh, just thinking about it. Who would you – who's going on TikTok? Okay. Give me – you did buy in the B-League, but you did Sydney, so we're not going to weigh in on Melbourne and Brisbane. We're okay. not. Okay. We are. We know what we're talking about, but we're not there. Yeah. So it's, it's not our area. Yeah. South Melbourne is by far home and away. They're, They're in there. They're in there. They're done. So, South Melbourne, yeah, put them in. Yeah. Preston Lions, I would put them in just for that fan base alone. You know you're going to get – Well, it's money. It's money. Yeah, money and a minimum – Yeah. Like, Probably four thousand every game. They're getting that three thousand now. I reckon, I reckon more. I reckon more. Yeah, I was. Yeah. I reckon they'll push ten when they yeah. get it. If they go. Oh it. yeah, and they'll get traveling support. Like the thing with these communities is, when they travel around to the different games, that community they represent, that culture, yeah. they're gonna rock up. So these these teams are gonna get away fans at every single game. You don't get that in the A League. Yeah. Like Wanderers, we go sometimes. They organize away trips for like the RBB and that. Other than that, you'll turn on a game. There'll be no away bay at these mm. games. Every single national second division, there's always a community in the area or the town that will go to that game. So Yeah. All right, this is a good way to put it. So, like, I'm just going to take two communities in in Sydney. Say the Pacific Islands had a team that represented them, that had a rich heritage of the Pacific Islands. Say it was a Perth team that – or no, Darwin. That's quite realistic. A Darwin Pacific Islands team that had Samoan, Tongan, Vanuatu, Fijian players in it. Yep. Playing Roy Krishna as the marquee, for example, right? <laughs> yeah. They play Wanderers in the um, A League. They end up in the A League. They play Wanderers. This Darwin team that has a rich history of Pacific Islander players. You can imagine so many from Mountie, Blacktown, Rudy Hill, the Pacific Islands focused areas in Western Sydney would come out to that game yep. to support them, be there for their community. Very similar. It's like if, if there was a Chinese team based in Melbourne and they came up and they're playing in Sydney, you'd imagine the Chinese community such as Cabramatta would go and get around it. Like that's, yep. I don't know, it's just like a ground level example for yeah, people to help understand, understand it. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, like say Carlton in Melbourne, very Italian centric, go out to Bosley Park, bruh, find a few of them out there. <laughs> Bosley Park, we've got Marconi anyway. I say we, that's just where my non is at. But same idea, if there wasn't Marconi, all the Italians would get up and go, if Brunswick could play in eastern suburbs, they'd yep. go out and be like, yep, yep. Forza the Azzurri. And you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. All that yeah, stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, it's um, it's fascinating stuff. But if we're to take four from Sydney, 
four teams. Oh. For the na- so for the national second division, if we're to take four teams from Sydney and surrounding areas, so we'll say we'll cut off we'll cut off at Newcastle. No, Newcastle Mariners is fine. We don't need to. They don't need yeah. more representation up there. So we're going to go from Sydney, and you can include the Wolves. Okay, four teams. Yeah. First, Marconi. What's the Azuri? Money, the club, the facilities. Pokies. Pokies. Yeah. Pokies. Get him in there. I think, yeah, I'd lock Marconi in. I say pokies for revenue. I don't gamble. Uh, revenue. That just That's what makes Panthers so rich is they have the RSL club. I, I hate gambling, but that's the matter of the fact, right? Yeah. Like it's just when you have a revenue driver like pokies, it's just – you take the revenue you can get at that level. I yeah. mean, like you've got to like yeah. take advantage of what you've they got. They could honestly sign a sick marquee. Yeah. I think, who do I suggest? Simone Zaza, still a free agent. Really? Mm. Still kicking it. He's only 30. Get a he'd be wild. <laughs> Bro, he'd, he'd kick it in Sydney. No one can tell me any different that he would not come and live in Sydney. Oh, he'd love it. But he'd probably rock up to like training once a month. and. That's what but he's still for. back three goals. He just, has to, he just has to get to the game. Yeah. That's yeah. all he has to do. <laughs> yeah. um, Otherwise, another team. Sydney United, I would have him in there. Yep. Croatian. Back Croatian home. back club. Very passionate fan base. I'll use that word. Probably have to monitor them a bit closely. Yeah. But I I do like the club. I've been there a couple of times this season and they're they're a big club and they will turn out for a national second division a hundred percent. Otherwise, I would take the Wolves. I think that that area needs a team. There's so many good footballers come out of there. Yeah. And now I'm left with Picking one from the rest. Yeah. It's going to annoy a lot of It's going to be hard, man. Who would you even pick? Oh, mate. So you've got like the big clubs left probably. You've got Arpia, who are the NPL champions. Sydney Olympic, Greek club. Belmore Oval. Rockdale Lillian, Macedonian club. No. I wouldn't. I think they're... Preston. Yeah. But then you do you want to like you'd probably want to not just Rockdale's not big enough as it is, but yeah, that's true. That's true. Rockdale's not big, so it'd probably be between. No, I'd say that's, sincerely, like this is not in, in compared <laughs> to Preston. Like in if just logically, the Preston's if you take it that Macedonian idea, yeah, you just you'd be dumb not to take Preston. They're getting four thousand in the MPL two yeah, or something. Yeah, like, yeah. Um, oh, who else is there? That's about it, really. That is probably it, and then you Arpia would get it. Yeah, I think they would too because they've also got Leichhardt Oval that they can go down there just yeah. down the road from Lambert Park. So, yeah, I'd have those four. So, we've got Arpia, Marconi, Wollongong Wolves, Sydney United. With honourable mention to Sydney Olympic. Yeah, I feel sorry for Sydney Olympic. Shout out the Greeks. Yeah. <laughs> then if we're to look up anywhere else, what, other lo- what are locations that you'd be open to the A-League expanding to? Um, so... We talked about it a bit earlier, but Canberra yeah. is one I would put in there. Just take Canberra United. They've got it in the women's the league a- right now. The AIS had the best opportunity ever to yeah. become – Canberra had the best opportunity ever to just be a bottom dweller in the A-League yeah. but produce fucking no juniors. All our AIS students, Arzani and all that, suddenly just go straight through there. They'd cook in the A-League, I reckon, as well, some of these players. Yeah, that's, some of the yeah. kids, man. Run, yeah. around, run rings around some of the centre-backs we've got – Controlling around, hey. Matt German still got a game. Like, yeah, he's yeah, be like yeah. forty. Topol Stanley was playing like two years ago at the age of like forty almost. Oh, he was playing last year. Yeah, yeah. He retired last year. But yeah, that's that's what I mean. Like what? Yeah, what I remember there was one time I think he was up against Karen Qua and he just dropped him down. Yeah. Red card. He was off at halftime. <laughs> it was like Aaron Kondo against uh, Marcelo. <laughs> Shout yeah, out Marcelo. Yeah. Absolute don. Oh yeah. man, I love him. Love that for like favela Brazilian like tough. Rough yeah. and tough stuff, eh? I mean, absolutely everyone in every other A League fan hates his guts because he's just him. a mongrel. But yeah, he had Irin Kunda, 17, 16 yeah, year no, old 17. in the headlock. Yeah. Um, good stuff, man. Yeah. That's what football's about. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, if you're old enough, you're it, yeah, old enough, you're good enough. You're old enough, you're good enough. He's scoring goals. He can take a headlock. <laughs> um, but yeah, other areas. I Do we want. You want to go somewhere where you're going to make a club bigger than the existing ones. So this is what I got. Yeah, you go ahead because I'm a bit stumped. With Cam- Cameron, Auckland, good picks. Yep. Darwin. You reckon Darwin? Because I've have you been to Darwin? No. You might want to go to Darwin and Darwin then Crocs. Think about- <laughs> yeah. Wait, we'll get the Mindel Aces. Yeah. The- <laughs> no, the I, I'm telling you, Darwin, and you just like I reckon there's so much untapped talent in the Pacific Islands. Yeah. 
when you so look is at- So there is a big community of Pacific Islanders in Darwin, is there? No, but I'm saying it's an hour flight, oh, right. two hour yeah, flight. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. can send your recruitment over yeah. and just you call, like Samara and all that, we'd have on speed dial, right? Like yeah, okay. they'd use our facilities, I'm sure. Yep. So you'd just be like, you just call them on speed dial. All right, who you got? What's what, Is there a 15-year-old kid in Samara right now that's got enough talent that we can bring over here and he's only two hour flight away from his family. Yeah. So yeah, you could look after him in that way. It's such like a stretch, but it's my idea. That's what I have in my head. It's like, plus the indigenous kids. Oh, there's so much talent that is just completely not looked after by football at all. Genetic freaks. Yeah. Yeah. They'd be so fast. And imagine if they're taught how to like use the pace. Yeah. And like, (laughs) like I say this very sincerely, there's a guy called Josh Soterio who earned a whole career on pace. Oh yeah, he's, there wasn't he's much a more to him. In the yeah, there everywhere. wasn't much more to him. No, mm. I mean, still, I think he's in India now, picking up millions, no. probably. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But like, that's what I mean. Like, he just had pace. It shows how yeah. far it gets you. Um, and then who else was? Who else was there? So I have Canberra and Auckland. They've done well with. I agree yes. with that. Yep. I agree with that. Tasmania, I pick. Yeah, new stadium coming there as well. So that's a good pick, I would say. Yeah, if it's yeah. Wollongong, I pick. You would put Wollongong instead of the second division. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Well, I mean, that would open the South spot Coast. for more of a you know, yeah. traditional powerhouse club that can really engage yeah. a community. Gold I Coast. I mean, Wolves, Wolves deserve it as well. But yeah. yeah, Gold Coast? Yep. So then Northern New South Wales also have representation? Yeah. Gold Coast? You mean? <laughs> no, 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 but I'm saying like, all right, say I'm playing in Coffs Harbour. Oh, yeah, got you. Or, no, yeah. no, Coffs is a bit shorter than what I'm talking about. Say I'm in Yamba. Yep. And I'm like, freak. I'm just some random kid that knows how to kick ball. Yeah. All of a sudden, I'm two hours away from a club. Yep. I say I'm in Byron Bay. I'm a Brazilian. I'm a Brazilian backpacker. They probably end up there anyway. Yeah. The yeah no, for sure. Yeah. Have you seen the Gold Coast lineup? Like, it's a Croatian club, and they have like yeah, yeah. South Americans playing for them. They've yep. got to be like blokes that have just come here to work. Yeah. And the, they just get picked up on semi-pro contracts. street footballers at home, and over here <laughs> they're on semi-pro money. Um, yeah. So re- revise. So I got Tasmania. Uh, no, wait. So we got ACT and who's the other one? Auckland. ACT, Auckland, okay, then I have Tasmania, then I have Darwin, then I also have um, Gold Coast and Wolves. Yeah, so well, that, that would take it to... That's six more. So that would take it to 18 teams. You could divide that in two if you added two more. Yeah. But then you just have to add like South Melbourne in that, at that point. Yeah, you'd have, to, you'd have to at some point take the big clubs from the second division. South Melbourne would be fine yeah. because Ange would endorse it. Yeah. Could you imagine like Ange after he's been with Tottenham comes back to Australia managing South Melbourne? Yeah, do you reckon? Mm, I reckon he would. For me, if like if in the That'd future. That'd be cracked. That'd be so unfair. Yeah, well imagine. He like, can take the blacks and red back South Melbourne and do a <laughs> job. Oh, the fitness though, you yeah. reckon? Yeah. <laughs> that would be right. Yeah, be just awesome. get us sitting behind the ball, get little Benny up front with Starboy Jazz. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, for me, that would be like, that's Australian football complete. If we've got a proper pyramid. Yeah. Ange comes back after dominating Europe, manages South Melbourne to a national division first title. Another Asian South Champions Melbourne. League. Yeah. That'd be sick. If we if Australia ever wins an Asian Champions League again, we've done something right because the rapid growth of Japan, Korea, Saudi Arabia, like we've got to we've got to turn it around because we're we're getting left in the dust right now. Saudi, we're getting left in the dust. Yeah. When you have Gabby Gabby Viega signing there as a twenty yeah. two year old Spanish prodigy. Yeah. And he's going to Al Ali. I know it's money. Like there's no – you have Riyad Mahrez who – put it this way, bro. There's around 50 footballers in Saudi that take a Fiorentina. Yeah. <laughs> and Fiorentina are fourth yeah, yeah, in the Saudi yeah. R. Yeah. Brozovic, Kante, Benzema. I'd take Ronaldo at this point in time. Yeah. Um, even when you just look at like guys that are just kind of like um, oh, some of the centre backs, like Felipe, he was at Real Betis, Koulibaly, Bono from Al-Hilal, Milenkovic, Savic. That – it's just the whole, like, it just goes on and on now. Yeah, and then, well, fuck, we're lucky to get, like, Marcelo. Yeah. Like, shout out to him. He, I can't believe he took the contract over here. He could have gone anywhere. But, yeah, that's what I mean. So, like, I don't know. I feel like it's going to be hard, but we can do it. Japan and Korea are such hard competition. Oh, Japan, like, they, they're... Japan, you know what? Japan could push for 2026. World Cup. Yeah. They're just developing these players who are just insane, like Matoma. They've got too much uh, width depth. Yeah. They don't have enough like guts, guts. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Japan don't have like those center backs that are like. Yeah, but they don't, they don't play a style to really develop those just hard on like, you know. No, but that's what you need. Yeah. 
I think if you want to go far in a World Cup, you need like yeah. no bullshit centre backs that are going to almost kill a man. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Apologies, brother. I don't know what's happening here. That's all right. Ben, can you see it in the thing? I think it was the, yeah, that one. Here we go. Can you see it now? Good. Nice. Uh, sorry. The mapping, uh, the lighting fell down. We're transparent around here. Um, <laughs> who, who was I talking about? Just now. Yeah. Talking about Saudi. And then we're talking about Japan. Yeah. Thanks, Benny. We're talking about Japan and Korea. I think Japan with their, like Japan are developing like Matomas, uh, Watara Endo. I know Endo is like 30. Have you seen what he does? No. He has like, a, he has like a online uh, like blog and he writes in it. Oh, really? After every game. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's in it's his actually Instagram interesting to have a look at. Yeah, it's, I think it's in yeah. Japanese, but yeah, you can translate it. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. like he just writes like his thoughts on every game. Yeah, right. He's done it since he was like 20 something. Wow. But um, yeah, Japan and Korea, like Korea producing Sun at the moment is just. Yeah, and Kim Min Jae, Bayern Munich now as well. Yeah. Like imagine if. But saying that, we are doing well. We're doing better. We were in the. We're in such a good position. Yeah, it would well, be so Australian to fuck up. Did you see up. some news that came out this morning? No, Skoko. About a, no, no, a certain Italian, Italian Australian. What, Vieri? No, Volpato. Oh, he wants Australia back? Yeah, apparently. Graham Arnold said there's good news on the way in regards to that. It's what not, are your thoughts? You're more an Italian football than me. He's so. not playing that much. Yeah. Do you mean you missed his, missed his chance or? No, 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 I'd take, take him. Take him 100%. Take him. Yeah, fairs. Arnie. Fuck, I've come full circle on Arnold all day. I wanted him. <laughs> I'll say this on record. I actually wanted him deported when we lost to Japan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a rough game though. I don't blame you after that one. Yeah, I, I have messages. I, bro, I sent in the chat. I was saying like, fuck, I like how much I love Arnie with like Ollie and Luke. And then Luke sent like, you know how on Facebook you can search like in the search bar you can type in a word and it comes oh, up. Oh, no, he put up the receipt. So he pulled up, typed in Graham Arnold. And he's like, bro, it's nuts. No, because I, I said in the message like I've come full circle. I'm officially full circle. I love him. I'll, yeah, I'll yeah, die yeah. for Graham Arnold. Because he brought in um, Mille, Gus Hiddink and Ange to Socceroos camp just yes. for England. Yes, all that. Fuck with that heavy. For those listening, Gus Hiddink got us to the 2006 World Cup. He's Dutch, but he's an adopted Australian at this yeah. point. And like- even Gus just being in there, just going like, I'm so proud to be a, a, like a, an Australian to you yeah. guys. And then like, Ange is just going like, mate. Yeah, <laughs> mate, like everyone loves me, but you know, like I started off somewhere and I work hard and yeah, just Ange giving his like typical <laughs> fucking South Melbourne Greek hard worker, bricklayer type of speech. <laughs> and then you got um, Mille just popping in and like Mille. Did you see Ian Holloway or Holloway? He's like the Blackpool manager. Uh, no. He had Blackpool in the Premier League. Yeah. And they asked him, like, best players you've ever had. He said, Mille Yednak. For, off the dome. <laughs> really? Yeah. He said, best player I've ever managed, Mille Yednak. Yeah, wow. Before Charlie Adam, before John Joe Shelby. Like, the, no joke, some of the, like, guys that Ian Holloway had. But, um, yeah. So, it was just with Arnold, I come full circle. But I forgot what I was talking about before that. But we'll continue on the Arnold rhetoric. because <laughs> yeah, I'll get back to it. it. I forget what I was talking about. We're talking about Socceroos in the rough. That rough pad coming good now, developing players. Yeah, they have developed a lot of players. But with Arnie, I honestly thought after the Japan game, it was like, get rid of him. Yep. As most Socceroos fans were, but... Yeah, a lot of us were. Yeah. I wanted him deported and then... Not that extreme, most people, but that's all right. It's I'm passionate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I hated the style of football. And then we get we get through to the World Cup and when we got through, I was still if, iffy on keeping him. But... I, well, you reckon sack him after that? Well, you couldn't. No, 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 no. no I completely agree. I, yeah. I just thought the trade off for getting rid of him for anyone else won't be worth it. Yeah. But I don't. I didn't think he'd do a job. What he did the World Cup was remarkable. Oh yeah, and he secured his job for the next two whenever he wants to hang it up. Yeah. Uh, Unless actually the Asian Cup probably be his biggest. No, nah, he just got to finish final four. Yeah. Well, oh, that's not really. Unless we come up. No, no. I'm someone. saying to keep his job. Oh yeah, yeah. As, if, as long as you don't versus Iran, South Korea and Japan in that round of 16, should be fine. Yep. Saudi lost to Mali this morning. Really? Yeah. Are they are they first team players? They'd still be playing though in Saudi Arabia or are they kind of yeah, getting pushed sh- out? No, but they're like, they're still playing, but like they're not. Yeah, they're not great. It, like it, it can only improve you so much. Yeah. Like you can't just, I could play fucking, I could play with Ronaldo for the next <laughs> year. I'm not going to improve that much. What, like what, you know what I mean? Like, Yeah, I get that. <laughs> I've been professional footballers with Ronaldo. 
No, but no, yeah, no, 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 for sure. Mean, but, but it's the same principle, bro. They can't, if they're just not talent, if they're not gifted and they don't get the game, they don't get the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If they don't understand like what it takes and like, especially as a national team, there's no Ronaldo to save you. Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, like what Arnold did at the World Cup just kind of shocked me. Isn't it crazy we've lost two World Cup winners in the knockouts just as well? Yeah. Oh, that. Oh, I've just had flashbacks to Green Qual. Yeah, same. Bit hey. of synergy in the room, eh? Oh. It was flashing in my head. So I, I can tell you where I was for every game. A cat, okay. and I, cat and dad and I had this conversation. I love having it. First game, France. I'm in bed. I have work at 6 a.m. Watched it half eye. Craig Goodwin scored. And legit, I'm sitting like this. I go, oh, fuck off. <laughs> There's no <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no way. Good on him. Because I knew I was coming. And just, yeah, yeah. And it, like just overrun. <laughs> and we get overrun. I went back to bed for a bit, went back to work. I wasn't I with France, I lost before I went into it. I was happy to just go like I was happy we scored. Yeah, yeah. I was honestly really happy we scored. That sounds so pessimistic in high, uh hindsight. But Oh, not at the time though. Like, no, but going into that game, we everyone thought we were gonna get overrun. Yeah. yeah. You'd agree, but like yeah. just Craig Goodwin scoring the opening goal. Yeah. was good. Oh, it was amazing. It was good for the A-League as well. And yep. then wh- who do we get? We get Tunisia. Yep. And Harry Sutar. Oh, that tackle. Blo- for a bloke who never stepped foot in the country, who, who represented the Socceroos, I think, before actually stepping foot in Australia. Yeah, he did. Or he stepped foot in Australia first time to represent the Socceroos. It's either or, right? Yeah, something like that, yeah. Like to become a hero that quickly with that tackle, that is one of the greatest tackles I've ever seen in my life. Oh, yeah. That was that – was a- it was very close, my reaction to the goal and to that yeah. tackle because the tackle came after, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we were hanging on. I was like, oh. Yeah, they were pushing this because they had a nil draw with Denmark, but we didn't know at the time what Denmark was going to do, which was shit the bed. Yeah. But um, I remember I was watching that at Watson's Bay with my one of my best mates, Luke, and we're just sitting there. And I remember we, like, the roar we fucking came out with when um, <laughs> Suda made that tackle because he's so lengthy. So he's, he's slow. Yeah. But when he launched himself, you're like, oh my god, you know what I mean? Like he just covered so much, and then he just got him. He did another one on um against England. Yeah, he did in the box. Yeah, yeah, oh. he's got it in him. It's nuts. Leicester don't play him. Yeah, he's, I, he, he was in the starting lineup the other day actually, but I don't know if he's that was just a yeah. rotation thing. But yeah, um, and then so we beat Tunisia, and it's like, okay, we're on. Now we've got to play Denmark, biggest yeah. game of our life, <laughs> and it was very much like. I don't know, man. It was, it was, it was. I was watching it at my mate's house at like Wednesday. I think it was a Wednesday morning or a Thursday morning at like. It was a two a.m. game, hundred percent. Yeah. Or four a.m. No, it was two because I went in to film. I went podcast to work. Yeah. After that day, after that game, so I was up from two a.m. and I went and did a podcast at six forty-five for being sports. That's nuts. Yeah, and then I drove back to Orange afterwards. Oh my! <laughs> so it was a fucking what a drive. Day. Oh yeah, I mean, f- I was buzzing the whole time. <laughs> Do you get feet up in uh, up in the mountains at all? Yeah, that um, there's a service station. Where's it in? Blackheath. Yeah, it's yeah. Servo. It's unreal. Best service station in New South Wales. <laughs> stop there every time I came from Orange to Sydney. You stop there, hundred percent. BP. <laughs> I think it's Blackheath. I don't know. I've done that drive like with like three hundred. Are you going miles. up or down the mountain? Uh, up from Orange. Wait, wait. So you're going down the mountain now? So, so from Orange to Sydney, is it on your left? Like yeah, on your left, on your left. Yeah, yeah, yeah Blackheath. Yeah. yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah, it's gone. I've stopped yeah. there before camping. Um, then, so that happens. You do your podcast and all that. That would have been pretty cool for you. It was unreal. Shout out Bon Offside Crew, Stav, Cat, Fabiano Brothers. Yep. Um, Pigeons. Yeah, and Joey Ferrone, I think's the other guy. Yeah. Who runs it? So, yeah. Um, he's so creative. He's. Do you see their video? The oh no, I haven't seen that. Is that behind the watch scenes it. and yeah, stuff? Yeah, it's yeah. cool. I'll check that it. out. Um then it's bro, we we're in our mate's lounge room, quiet as, and I had to like scream into my mate when we scored. I couldn't <laughs> believe it. I was like, Pete sitting next to me, I was literally hugged him and just screamed into like a pillow. <laughs> like I, it was such a beautiful goal, like Lecky McGree yeah. into Lecky, and he goes in and he goes, Yeah, you know, he's on the out, he comes back in, he goes back out. Left foot and it just dribbles past Casper Schmeichel. Eh? And you're sort of like, oh, oh. it's actually real. Reliving it in my head right now. And yeah. then just Denmark just came and came and we just held out. And yeah. it's just Denmark, I feel like Denmark didn't really have a good chance after it. You know, I wasn't I wasn't like, that nervous about the game at all. Like as soon as we scored, I was like, Fuck, we've done it. We've yeah. actually done this. Year. Like at the, in the moment, you're like, oh. 
Yeah, it's getting put on us and then yeah. it's not really at the same time. Like you feel like in the moment you kind of feel like you're under the pump and then you afterwards you kind of like watch the highlights back. You're like, they didn't really do yeah. anything this whole game. It's like, oh. Yeah, it's all that centre back holding the ball bullshit. Like yeah, yeah. you feel like you're getting pressured. And then we versus Argentina. And I remember being in Watson's Bay at like crack of dawn watching that. Yeah. I think it was 5 a.m. kickoff or 6 a.m. kickoff. Yeah, it was an early one. And the country's ready. Like yeah. The country's like full watching. And there's about a thousand flares ready in Fed Square in Melbourne. Yeah. <laughs> ready to go. How about the scenes, eh? Oh, man. That was. Uh, are you going to the next World Cup? I'm going, eh? I want to, yeah. We'll see. Have to save up a bit because, but yeah. I've been putting $50 a week into an account for a year now. It's really? Like two and a half grand, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. So it's just. Yeah, no, I definitely want to get over there. That'll be a mad one. Just pay Cup. for my flights yeah. off the get go and then save for everything else. Yep. But, um, like watching that. <laughs> And Argentina definitely was it Alvarez scored the opener. That was Messi, wasn't it? Was it Messi? Messi got the first one because it was and early. It was yeah, early. Messi scored the first one, and then Ryan spills it for Alvarez. Yes, yes. Two nil down, and everyone's criticizing Ryan at the time. And I remember saying, "You cannot fucking blame him for the style of football we're playing." But furthermore, Matt Ryan's service to this country, he is allowed to let us down. <laughs> yeah. There, he's the only footballer for a period of time. Him and Aaron Moy were the only ones who kept us a fucking a head above water. Yeah, quite literally. He was at Arsenal. Moy was in China, like Celtic after China, and before that, Brighton and Huddersfield. Like they were the only ones keeping our head heads. Above oh yeah, water. that was like only in top five. Like yeah, <laughs> for a good like three four years there, they were the only ones. Yeah, and then oh man, just thinking about it. Then who is it? Is Goodwin. It, Goodwin just hits a deflected shot. <laughs> the just, biggest deflection you've ever seen. So good. And then Bayich makes his run oh. from halfway. Wasn't that freakish? That was that was um yeah that messy the messy goal he scores on the other side. Yeah, it was that. But Bayich as a Bayich <laughs> left back playing at Dundee who got relegated from the Scottish top division. <laughs> yeah, cuts apart the world champions. <laughs> no, uh, you know who made that tackle? Lich, uh, Lichau, like uh, Lissandra Martinez. Yeah, yeah. Just, that's a freakish tackle, eh? It didn't, oh, get, yeah. it didn't get talked about because it was kind of just like an Australian left back. Like It wasn't that, like a glorious title to it, but that actual yeah. tackle is just nuts. Yeah. Watching it back. Then I remember with Luke and Ollie, I've said this before, We you can tell after watching football for a certain amount of time when a chance will come. Like you just know. Yeah, you like, get that feeling. Yeah, it's, it's very – it's it's you can call it. If you're watching it and you've watched the whole game, you'll be like, yeah, the ball will drop. It's just – Will you take it? Like, yeah, it, your chance will come. If I could be blacks and redbacks playing Sydney FC, if we've put the pressure on enough and it's one goal difference, and we put the ball in the box, it is every chance of dropping, and it's a matter of can you hit it? Can you get on target? And I remember when that ball came into the box and it dropped, and Garang was on the turn, and just it hits the underside of Emmy Martinez. <laughs> I was on the floor. I was actually Mark. My heads were in the hands, eh? Because I thought it went under and it was going in, and then yeah, you like see when Martinez, it skips through off the back, and, and he just turns and grabs it, and he's going. Bro, and the, the best footballers in the world are diving on him, like thanking him. Yeah. And there's a kid from fucking, I'm pretty sure he's from Goulburn. Yeah, he was in, yeah, yeah, Shepherds in Goulburn, that, yeah, somewhere out there. Like, like Two years ago, he was in Goulburn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and Messi is on his knees thanking his goalkeeper that this kid has just not scored against him. <laughs> like, that just shows what Australia does. It's crazy oh, yeah. to me. Like, we are the world champions. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Like, it's funny, though, because Garen Quall, like, that was off the back of, like, an unbelievable, like, he just coming off the bench every yeah. game. And he had chances like that, probably, like, six or seven of them. He put away, like, five. In the A-League. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a bit of a different level, yeah. but I'd seen it before so many times. I was like, yes, that's who I wanted to fall to. Yeah. And he's, ah. Oh. Because could you imagine, like, if he had done that? Mm. I reckon, no, oh, I don't know if we go on to win it, but. No, nah, penalties are so different. Yeah. Penalties are so different. Because Argentina wouldn't have expected that. Because you'd have like Messi would keep his head. Yeah. Di Maria would keep his head. I don't know if Di Maria was still on the pitch, but purely examples. So you have like those guys that keep their head, but you get your Alvarez's and you get your, their fullbacks like Acuna and uh, Montiel. Like yeah. those guys, that's who you want taking pens because every chance they could brick it. Yeah. Whether Australia steps up to the plate's another thing. <laughs> Sub on Redmayne. Get yeah. Redmayne on there. <laughs> That would have been biblical, eh? Yeah. Imagine Andrew Redmayne saving a Leo Messi penalty. To One, knock, a to man knock can dream, Leo Messi out of his last World Cup. Yeah. Andrew Redmayne. Oh, man. Andrew Redmayne, a bloke that if he was working at the IGA, you wouldn't bat an eye. Yeah. <laughs> I 
met him that long ago, actually. <laughs> yeah. I was at an Adidas event. He was a, he was a mad guy. Yeah, really yeah. Bloke. He comes across lovely, eh? Yeah, he's, he's real good. He's one of those guys who just got caught up in that uh, cross Sydney transfer bullshit. Yeah. He's just like, and yeah. yeah. He should have been the Australian goalkeeper, man. Didn't he get lost to the wind? Yeah. Well, he, oh, he burnt so many bridges. Yeah. So. Australian football, man. But yeah, Redmayne just, nah, a one can dream, eh? Yeah. It's just nice to look back on and just go, like, we lived it. Yeah, this is like peak, like 2006. I don't How old are you? 2000. Oh, same. Yeah. yeah. So, you, I mean, we were there. We yeah. were like sitting Conscious. in the room somewhere, yeah. but <laughs> don't remember it. Yeah, I remember the there. hype. Yeah, yeah. I remember not as an Italian Australian wondering why everyone made fun of me at like school <laughs> for a few weeks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Calling me like a diver and all that. I grew up with it in primary school. Like, just all the Italian boys are getting called like divers. And I remember, bro, I remember being like, 20 or 21, going back and looking at it and going, what the fuck is Lucas Neal doing? <laughs> he's on the floor for two yeah, meters. Yeah. Of course he's going to go down. Yeah. It was one of the, st- oh, anyway, that, that that's something else. Now, a few other things I want to bring up. We've touched on Arnie um, and we've touched on a few other things. A-League Marquis post Shinji Ono, Del Piero and Heskey. Yeah. Why do you think it's gone so wrong since? Feel like the league hasn't grown to the level other leagues are, so we're not being able to get these guys who because clubs aren't. I feel like the A League clubs are going after the name, not yeah. what you're going to get from the players. Like Ono, obviously massive player, but he also yeah. had that talent on the field that he could yeah. provide. The A League now isn't really in a position to compete with these other clubs, especially now Saudi Arabia, Saudi. but. They kind of have to just go after anyone they can. Anyone they think will get people into the stadium, that's kind of who they're going after. That's why they went after Lewis Nani, Charlie Austin, Daniel Sturridge. Three guys who probably, you know, Sturridge was probably the only one who had a really bad injury record, who they should have never went after, but he was there, so they did it to get that name in. Yeah. I just think, yeah, I don't know. They're just not looking at the right people. I think... Instead of going for those names now, I think they should go for players who can make a name in the league. Yes. And get hype around them. One for me who I'm loving right now is Marco Tulio at the Mariners. Had a good season last year. Took a while to get into it. But this year, I reckon he's going to be the best player in the league now Goodwin's gone. Tulio. What about Pena? Oh, yeah. He's back. Forgot about him. Yeah. <laughs> he's a problem. Yeah. He could be a problem. Western United. I want to um, bring up some players with you. These flops. No, 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 no. Oh, shit, man. Sorry, we got a lot of posts here together. Okay, here's some Marquis concept football and I put together. Okay, let's go into it. Let, let me know if you, you do or don't like. All right. Um, f- oh, uh, t- oh, f- These were for some of the clubs, right? These were just like some guys we put, oh, shit, I've lost it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Stay That's with right. me, people. Stay okay. with me, okay. people. Um, so like this was for the national second division, like the bold marquees that like you could go for. It got real. It did really well on TikTok and whatnot. People backed it. Yeah. I put Leonardo Bonucci. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Simone Zaza. Yes. He's a free agent. At yeah. The, moment. the only thing would be when was the last time you had a club? It's been a while. Turin. Yeah. So a while a ago, ago. Like a year ago. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's still there when Bellotti was. Yeah, okay. All right, this guy's different, but he's a Cypriot left winger in the MLS. His name was Marinos Chizonis. I wanted him to play for Bentley Greens because they're a Cypriot club. Yeah, yeah. He's the only Cypriot in like a good league at the moment. Yeah. Um, He's like a 21-year-old. He wasn't getting much game time at the moment. He's like a star boy of the MLS now. So it was actually a good call. Yeah, right. But uh, Denny Yurik for Canberra. Yeah. Well, Canberra, Croatia? Is yeah. That what you're talking about? Yeah, absolutely. Denny Yurik. Mitch Langrak. Is he, is he still playing? Is he, oh, he's still in Japan? Yeah. yeah, I would, if he's keen on it, yeah, I'd bring him back. He's an unreal keeper. Should have played Yilmaz. so much more. Yilmaz, yes. There was actually talk of him. There was talk about getting him to, might have been the Wanderers. Yeah. They were actually talking about getting Fuck, him. Bro, the, the shoots, you could do it like kebab shops with yeah. him, eh? We have my local kebab shops called Turkish to go. I could yeah. just imagine the mad marketing campaign you could do there, eh? Yeah. Just like him ordering like a, like just like a video of like him ordering like a snack pack. And then yeah. opening it up and it's like Yilmaz on the other side of it. <laughs> and it's, it's, I don't know, there's just so many ways you could do no, it. No, there's potential. Uh, Antonio Kondreva. Yeah. He's still killing it in Serie A. He's like fine wine, eh? 40, 40, about 40 now? Yeah, for Salernitana. He's yeah. Won't, he just won't cark it. Harvey Martinez, 
Still playing in Qatar. Really? Yeah. Well, I haven't heard that name in a long time. He's a World Cup winner. What, 20, 2010? He's part of the squad. I mean, you can bring him in just for that alone. <laughs> hey, <laughs> it was that Bayern when they dominated. Yeah, yeah. Like he was that DM. He held that down. Yeah. Goran Pandev for Preston, bring yes. him out of retirement. You could get him. I reckon he's in retirement now. Yeah, so you'd take Goran Pandev. Probably, I reckon they could have a crack at him now and get him down there playing NPL 2 or whatever they're in. He, bro, he's a treble winner. Oh, Inter? Yeah. yeah him, Melito. Oh, God. God. Who the fuck was the other guy? I don't know. Don't look at me, man. I'm, I'm blank. 2010 Inter. Schneider? No. Yeah. No, he was there. Wasn't he? <laughs> don't know. That's right. Um, we move on. We continue. This guy. So this guy was the bloke who knocked Italy out of uh, World Cup. Uh, Ilya Nestorovsky for Rockdale. Oh, yeah. Another Macedonian footballer. Yeah, okay, yeah. Um, but he's in like Qatar or something. He's not in like a Saudi league. So he's just kind of kicking it now yeah. after that goal. And yeah, I'd bring him. Yeah. Um, Trent Sainsbury. Yes. He's in Qatar right now. Yeah. I'd bring him out. Who do you have him down for in that actually? South Hobart. Get Tasmania. Yeah. Get an Aussie name. There's, I don't know about, I don't think Tasmania is very ethnic. So. No. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Trent Sainsbury would be good. Plus, it just brings a noticeable name for the rest of the country. Yeah, like if you've been following the soccer ruse at all for the yeah. last 10 years, you know Trent Sainsbury. Yeah, same with Langerax. Like put them down in Tasmania. Put yep. put Aussies in Tasmania where people can just associate a name and quickly be familiarised with it. Yeah. That, that's what I would do. Um, uh, Papadopoulos, Greek centre-back. Oh, yeah. yeah, get him at one of the clubs, South Melbourne or... Haddam Ben Arfa. Oh, streets. The streets will not forget that man. Dimitri Petratos. Oh, yeah. Well, he's, he's, uh, oh, he's getting the bag in India right now with the cum dog. So. Uh, Nikola Kalinic. Croatian. Was he, the, was he the guy at the World Cup he got sent home? Or was that a different guy? No, nah, maybe not him. He's the tall. He played for Fiorentina and that back in there. He's like a yeah, yeah. lank, yeah, like slender I know man type of striker. Yeah. Yeah. So would you take all them? Yeah, are, any of those names, if you can get them out here, I think you've got to take them. You've got to most probably bring them through the ethnic clubs. Yeah. You can't, yeah. Because th- those types of players don't, I don't think they kind of move the dial that much in the A-League. Yeah. The A-League has got its nailed on fans who are there now, but you need the A-League to grow. I think they need the A-League to grow different ways than just bringing players. How, where, how so? Like, I think you've got to change the structure of it. I think you've got to stop being an Australian sports league. You've got to start being a football league opposed to trying to cater to yeah. what is the normal in Australia. It's The league feels alien to your traditional football fan. Like, there's no promotion and relegation. We've already talked about this. Like, it's going to be hard to introduce that. But finals, things like this, there's, there's things that I think could be changed to make it feel more familiar to... Your typical football fan who just isn't caring about the A League like and hasn't cared about other examples. What do you got for me? Oh, man, you put me on the spot. So get rid of A League finals. I would get rid of the finals, increase the season, increase with expansion to however you can. And I look to also the sooner you can start introducing the second division clubs, get them in there, get that community base back as you can. Mm. I mean, the biggest thing would be promotion and relegation, but just. Yeah. Can't see it happening anytime. And obviously just marquees is yeah. like just if you can. Yeah. yeah. But the thing's like Wanderers had Morgan Schneiderlin playing for us last season and didn't really sign in the back ass of Grace, do you see that? Yeah, but he's already left there, I think, hasn't he? Or is he no, back there Tur- again now? No, 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 that was Turkey. Yeah. Oh, so he's <laughs> Yeah, he's in the back ass of Grace. <laughs> he, was, he was actually gonna sign for Western United a couple of weeks ago as well. <laughs> Shocking. God, they, they they might get folded quick. Western United. Yeah. I'd be more worried about MacArthur before them. I reckon they'll go all right. They've got a new stadium now, or stadium. It's about 1,000 seater. Is that it? Yeah, they promised 15,000, but there's been delays. <clears throat> there's been delays in building that. Um, but yeah, so they're going to be playing in like a 1,000 seat stadium this season in the A League. What? Like that's 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 um, seating, like seating. Yeah. Yeah, but then there's people standing. Yeah. If they don't pack that out, that's a disgrace. Yeah, I said that on Twitter. I said if this if we see one single spare seat in this stadium, then that's it. License revoked on the spot. God, that's so concerning. <laughs> that is so concerning. 
All right, current Aussies overseas. Ooh, are we ranking them or are we going to? I'll get some up for you. It's almost 10 p.m. Sorry, Ben. I know you got work tomorrow, bud. <laughs> right, so I've just got to scroll through the pages here again. I'm very sorry, people. I wasn't I wasn't prepared to bring this stuff up. So um, there's a few that kind of, uh, I don't know, there's a few that kind of stick out to me. Have you heard of that Noah Skoko? Yeah, he was just in the he's top 50 youth players yeah. in the world. Yeah, he's Josip's in, son, right? Yeah, yeah. He's, they're not sure if he's going to pick Croatia or Australia. He will, he, that's what the got, you know, the golden generation, they didn't yeah. put any of their kids back into the Australian system. Yeah, yeah. They're all in those countries. Biggs Neil's son, I'm yeah, pretty sure. England. Yeah, even Mark's son, I don't know how much he played in Australia, even yeah. though he's in the Philippines, playing Philippines. Yeah. But, um, all right. So here's some players Cam Pupion. Oh, Brighton. Yeah. Yeah. What do you reckon? I rate Soccer him. Soccer like, I haven't seen him. I haven't seen that much of him because he plays mostly in the... Yeah, sec- uh, like the under-20s type yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I haven't seen that much of him, but yeah, hearing good things. I've seen him a bit in the um, Oli Roos and that. He looks, yeah, he looks pretty yeah. decent. Joshua Rawlins. Yeah, he's at Utrecht. Yeah. Right. Um, They've got to cap him because Malaysia want him as their captain. Malaysia? Is he? <laughs> yeah. Really? Bro. They want him bad. His comment sections are full of it, like online forums, everything. Really? Malaysia's going hard no, at it. Surely not. He, I'm pretty sure he's the captain of the Oli yeah, Roos. Um, that's what I'm saying. You still yeah. got to cap him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. Uh, Mohamed Torre. Yeah, he just got his soccer his debut. Yeah. Playing oh, for yeah. Paris. Paris. S- Iran Kunda. Yeah, the kid. The wonder kid. Jordy Boss. He'll be in the Premier League. Oh, yeah. He, he might be like they have the highest ceiling, I think. Over Iran Kunda. Yeah, just because of that position, his build, his skill, I think he could be like a gun. And that position is sometimes hard to develop. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, you got to kind of like Robbo. They just out of nowhere, you've got a left back for ten years. Yeah, yeah. It's a very similar thing. Jordy Boss could be that for a Premier League club. It's like yeah. out of nowhere, you just sign this kid. After a year, all the fans agree, left yeah. back for the next five years minimum. Yeah. Um, Keegan Yelisic. He's in. Uh, is he still gank? At gank? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I didn't look. To be honest, I didn't actually watch that much of him last year because he was at Perth and Perth were playing at Macedonia Park, and he was pretty much like watching Sunday League, yeah, the streaming, and the lighting there was terrible. So I, I tried to avoid it as much as yeah. I could. But um, yeah, no, I'll, I mean, yeah, rate him. Let's we'll see him a bit more. Uh, Alessandro Sassati. Very good, very good. This morning started yeah. against New Zealand. Yeah, good. I like that partnership with Suta. A bit better on the ball. Yeah, that changed me up, eh? That's I'm a keen good to see gun the, partnership. Dude, I'm, seeing the, I'm keen to see them get into a bit of a, uh, you know, a push and shove with like. <laughs> Did you see Backers the other day against yeah. Colwell? He's, oh, I love uh, that. I, yeah. Kieran. Um, oh, yeah. Ke- fuck, Kieran. Keanu, he's a Western Sydney dog. Yeah. Like, it just you just can't like, <laughs> you can't train that out of a man, you know? That's just yeah. in him. Uh, Riley McGree also, oh, he's not a junior, but it was just who I said to keep your eye on. Yeah. Um, but there was a few other Australians that I didn't cover as much, which I should have. You got like, you know, Skoko. The, the, yeah, like we mentioned, that like golden generation of players that like, yeah, they're not, the their sons aren't playing over here. And that says a lot about what we've got in Australia right now. They, they, I mean, if you're that level of player and you can afford to put your kids yeah. through that system over there, I mean, you've got to do it. Do you reckon that, that's a way forward, sending kids overseas real young? No, nah, we've got we've got to make something because otherwise, like, there's only so many kids who you can do that with. But if we have something here, that's open to all kids in Australia. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, he was my second part. Garen Quall, we already know, star boy, star boy. He, he's playing a lot, and that's what people go. Oh, that Valendam team, they're hard, they're not winning anything. Blah blah blah. Yeah, give a fuck. He just has to play. He just yeah. that's all that matters. Um, Harry Suter just has to play. Same thing. Marley Francois or Francis. Marley or Tyrese? No, Marley. Marley. Yeah, I don't know. I honestly, I don't know much. Apparently, his nationality is up in the air. Yeah. Cause... Is that Bristol? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Tristan Hammond. He's at um, Austria Wien or Van. Yeah. Did you talk about bringing him back, maybe to A League in one of your yeah. recent posts? Or uh, no, I different? just said pay attention to him. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I'm, uh, I can't keep track of him. Yeah. Alex Robertson. Oh, he is. Freak. He's gonna be that midfielder. For the this next, is what, bro, okay. this jays me up. We're talking about like Geordie Boss, Alex Robertson, Kun, Aaron Kunda. Chikardi, Suta, right back. You've got, do you see Lewis Miller much? You see much of him? Yeah. 
Yeah, I rate him. He's very similar build to Geordie Boss, but I don't know if he's got the same. I think Rawlins may come into it and do a job. It's Atkinson's strain, but yeah. Strain maybe. Yeah. He just had... I've watched him play for St. Mirren because it's on – it was on St. Mirren uh, on BN Sports last year. Yeah. And you'd be able to catch a few games. Keanu was so natural to it. It was nuts. But um, then they loved him. He scored a winner against Celtic, I'm pretty sure. But Strain was the same. He's so good for St. Mirren. So it's like, why is that not – what's going wrong for the Socceroos? You know what I mean? Yeah, no, that I That opportunity that, yeah. against England. Yeah, he should have buried that because that was like an open goal – 10 yeah. yards out. Yeah. So it's like, why, why aren't you doing the same? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I wonder. No, because like. It, What's the difference? He between? should be a right back. No discussion. Yeah. But even uh, like Arnie obviously thinks something's not. Not fully there yet. Yeah. Not do you know what I mean? Like the, yeah. The right back position's still up. Aiden O'Neill. I think he should be our DM. Yep. Yeah. Or you can play him at the. The problem is, is you have Keanu, who's a DM. You have. O'Neill, who's box to box, then you have Robertson, who I think is going to be like Jude, where everyone says he's a box to box. In reality, he's going to be our best ten because yeah. his skill levels there. He's a Man City product. Yep, and he's absolutely destroying it in League One right now. Yeah, he's not, he's, I've seen like clips from him playing. He hit the post about six times from outside the box. Yeah, it's nuts. Like it's it's close, and when it clicks, he's him and Yangi. Yeah. And then in goals, which we normally never have a problem with coming through, but we are having a bit of um. It's a bit of an issue. Yeah. Is Joe Gauci? I think he's got to go overseas ASAP. Yeah, he's just got to keep playing, keep developing because he's not—he's nowhere near his peak as a keeper yet. That comes later, much later on. Yeah. So we're gonna have to wait and see. But, but hopefully, Ma- Maddie went over. When was he? He was pretty young too, wasn't he? Yeah, he went to Belgium. Yeah. Um, and then I got Jed Drew, signed for Fiorentina, bruh. I can't watch. <laughs> no, Jed, bro, Jed. We um, we'll go watch like I've I've done it before with him. We went and watched like local prems teams. Yeah. And like at halftime, we just go like a kick. And there was one time where like this ball just got crossed in. He like takes it on his chest and he just hits like a half volley into the top bins from like the edge of the 18 yard box. <laughs> You're like, this kid's an A League right winger. Yeah, we do yeah. not respect these blokes enough. <laughs> that is stupid. He didn't even care either. He just put his shoes on and walked back off the field. <laughs> yeah. you know, that is stupid that like people can do that. <laughs> but um, yeah, that, like the young soccer who's coming through, man, there's some serious talent. Yeah. That Ollie Roos team as well. That like. I'm excited for the, the Olympics next year. It's yeah. going to be very good to watch. Yeah, you have that Segacic kid as well. Yeah, Segacic. Paddy has, or well, he might be a bit old now. No, Paddy has no, back. I'd bring him into Australia. Yeah, yeah. Because he was in, he was in the squad, train on player, I think. Yeah. Someone. I'd just bring, yeah, and um, Daggers as well. Yeah. End up in that squad. Yeah. Daggers isn't a bad shout, you know, for that striker spot. Yeah. He can't be much worse than Borello and Duke. He can't be. It'll just be because. I mean, Duke's just the pressing machine. Actually, Duke and Barello are just like you interchange yeah. one, like they're the same pretty much. Yeah, Duke's a bit better. But Duke's, Hold up. Duke's legs are going to go soon. Yeah, what is he's, he's got to be thirty something. Yeah, well, Duke's, that's yeah. To be fair, that's normally a position we've struggled with striker. But there's a couple of guys in the A League this season: Noah Bodic, Tom Waddingham, uh, Archie Goodwin at the Jets. They're all they're all decent, but they just need that breakout season. Yeah. So keep an eye on those three, I reckon. You know who kind of disappointed? Uh, I don't want to say disappointed. You know who kind of like Phil should have been there by now and been our strikers, Dylan Wenzel Halls. Yeah. Well, he's at the Mariners now. So he might. You, just had, you just had years there where you're like, oh, you you should be our striker. Yeah. And you just never. And then you got J-Mac who just doesn't. J-Mac, Alu Quoll. Get him firing again at the Mariners this year. Yeah. See, here's here's a reason why you don't send players over too early. Yep. And then who's the other guy that who's that guy at Mariners that was at like in the back ass of Germany and he was struggling? He used to play in Melbourne, the Greek fella, the real short one. Oh, Fia Harris. Yeah. Yeah. He's another one where it's like you can't send him over way too early because yeah. they'll just yeah, they'll I struggle. love watching him though. He's a fun player to watch. Yeah. Some, there's some players. Josh in the Nisbet, early. man. <laughs> Imagine Nisbet getting a Socceroos jersey. That'd be good for the soul. Yeah. That'd be very good for the soul. Um Kids paying thousands to play NPL thoughts. That's not good. That's my thoughts. Um, that turns off so much talent to the other codes, completely destroys our chances of getting the best athletes. Yeah. Just because, I mean, I can speak from experience. Like my brother played NPL in back in for Western, that team. Yeah. That's my family paying money to not only just play, but traveling around. It's just, it gets to a point where it's like ridiculous. You can't no. ask kids to do that. And then you get to the point where it's the kids who've got the money are playing. So 
I mean, in terms of fixing it, like <laughs> a second division might help that. These clubs can get a different revenue stream and more money in rather than getting these kids to pay fees so that we can pay our first team players. Yeah. Yeah. They just got to figure out better ways to commercialise themselves, the clubs. Yeah. Just get more creative with it, I think. I think it's yeah. kind of lacking that a bit. 110%. Yeah. Like develop, like, I don't know, it's something, it sounds so stupid, develop your own beer, make cool merch. Like don't yeah. just do like... Actually, I saw Sutherland Sharks, they've got their own beer. I saw they put it on their story today. Yeah. You just, Actually, like stuff like that, it's just smart. Like, you Yeah, you just things. collaborate. That It sounds like extensive, making your own beer. It's not. You just go to a brewery, just go, hey. Slap your logo on it. We just want, yeah, we just want a case. Uh, we want two cases every week or three cases every week. Um, here's our logo. Can you put on a can? Just redesign one of your lagers. Yeah. It's... You're not inventing a new beer. You're just taking a beer that's already out there and just putting your logo on it. Because a brewery will happily just add one ingredient, all of a sudden they've got a new beer. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's, yeah, absolutely. It's not like a complex yeah, just, thing. I feel like, yeah, there's a lot of that in Australian football. It's just like doing little things can make such a big difference. Yeah. And it's the fact that everyone's not taking those extra steps. Then, it, you know, the young kids are the ones suffering because they're the ones who, yeah. at the end of the day, that's where... They're paying this money when these clubs can't be bothered to try to figure out better ways of doing things, a better structure. Yeah. Yeah. And like selling kits. Yeah. They, so many like NPL clubs don't sell kits. I've tried to buy a couple, like just go on websites and they don't even have a shop. Yeah. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, Yeah. <laughs> it's nuts. It's just like, man, there's so many ways to fix it. There's just so many ways to get creative with how we do things over here. Yeah. Like just merch should be way better. The ways you can make revenue is just so different. Um, owning things as well, assets, being able to rent them out. Yep. That's another thing as well. Hosting tournaments on turf you own is another thing where you host like six a side every week and all of a sudden you're generating like $1,000 a night. You yep. know what I mean? Like, Yeah, absolutely. There's just stuff like that and you're just going, what are we talking about? Like what are we doing here? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just, I don't know. And in the canteen, like if I was, this is just purely, if I'm an Italian club, I'm making like sandwich, like the best sandwiches known to man Selling them for ten to fifteen dollars to get people in there for the sandwich. Yeah, do you know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, no, no, that's, right, that's right. If I'm Croatian, I'm getting chavapis and say, yeah, chavapis four bucks. Come, yeah, yeah, and just and that way you get people in. What 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 they buy from there is whatever. On the way out, you set up your merch stand, and that way you people can buy a jersey on the way out if they Absolutely. enjoy the experience. All of a sudden, you just you've just turned a four dollar chavapi into a hundred and twenty dollar sale. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it seems simple, doesn't it? But for some reason, they just... Yeah, they're all stupid, man. Yeah. Get me in charge of you guys. Yeah. Get out of here. Where's that guy? Did he, did he jump ship, Danny Townsend? Ah, uh, yeah, apparently he's gone Middle East. Dog. Got a job. <laughs> yeah. that, that, that word does not represent Joe's thoughts. That's purely my opinion. Dog. <laughs> That's, that sucks, eh? What, everything with that? Yeah, or the... Danny. What did you... The, the, did you see that the decision was reversed this morning? No, oh, fuck, man. I went to work and then came here. What happened? Okay. So, I missed a bit. Eh? So, grand final no longer in Sydney, which was the big issue. Now in Sydney, we've got uh, Gather Round Magic Round in January called Unite Round. We're going to have a round of A-League games all in Sydney instead of the grand final decision. Thoughts? Better. Damage is done. Yeah, I would say so. A lot of people got, I mean, like, let's let's talk about, it. like, the decision's made. A week later, Tom Glover gets hit in the head with a bucket. They're, they're, <laughs> one didn't directly lead to the other one, but if the decision doesn't happen, Tom Glover doesn't have a yeah. six stitches in the side of his head. Yeah. What do you do, eh? Yeah. But look, I, I like that idea. It's a lot, I mean, I don't know why they didn't come up with it in the first place. When is it? January. January, yeah. Yes. I mean, I've already had guys message me today about wanting to organise something for it. I'll be like there. Mates from... When is it in January? Uh, 12th to the 14th, I think. Wanderers Play City. So they're doing at uh, Combank and Alliance. Splitting the games up, double headers. Why not put it at all one stadium? I think the pitches would get too ripped up. Oh, fuck it. Because they're doing it with the women's as well. Oh, okay. So it's like, it's not... Six games, like 12 games in a weekend. All right, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Just got the article up. Uh, we don't have uh, Jamie, if you listen to Joe Rogan. We don't have that yet. We haven't hooked Benny's mic up. We'll give Benny a voice one day, but won't we, Ben? 
<laughs> the APL have reversed a controversial decision to host the men's and women's A-League Grand Finals in Sydney instead of introducing their own version of Magic Ground in its place for the next two seasons. United Round will take place between Friday, January 12th and Sunday, January 14th. We'll see every game of the a- A-League's men and women take place in the stadiums across Sydney, becoming the first national sports to host men and women's competitions in a single city at the same time. Blah, 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 blah. Tony Townsend is the current chief executive. We have worked closely with our clubs and fans to ensure that there are suitable constructive me- mechani- mechanisms for the voice of fans to be heard. No doubt, Danny. No doubt. Don't jump ship, but you're here now, bruh. We thank Premier Mins and New South Wales government for this fundamentally important partnership for their continuing support for the development of football Australia. No, Danny, no. They do not support us, bruh. Come on, man. Don't be so... Don't you reckon? Oh, the like government? Yeah, he's thanking oh. the government for their support. Oh, dude, you, you need a... Do you follow rugby league at all? Yeah. You need he's... you need a Volandis. That's oh, a, yeah, like a... Lord actual... PVL, man. <laughs> He, yeah. that guy, I was speaking about with Matt, like the guy who was in here before. That guy saved rugby league on like a week's notice. He said in during COVID, yeah. they couldn't play. He calls Queensland government and he goes, open up Suncorp, give me all the players in, give me one hotel to put all my players in, get me up there. Done. Rugby yeah. league saved. Rugby league's back on television before anyone else. He just does it. Do you want to know what happened in the A League instead of that? There was about 150 games got rescheduled during COVID. Crowds of under 1,000 at every single game. That was it. That's, that's the difference. Having someone there who can make those decisions. Yeah. Then, yeah. then cut cut the shit. Just be like, whatever, we've got to go into a bubble. Let's put it all at a very small ground. Let's just give some random kit, random stadium coverage. Like <laughs> put all the boys at Coffs Harbour for all the fucking – obviously the turf now I'm thinking about it. But like just, just put them all somewhere. Just put them in a hotel at the time and just go, done. We're playing the games. We're getting back on television. Yep. It's just the shit we don't do, man. Like, anyway, they're, they're, look, there's so much more to cover in Australian football. Ben, how long have we been going for? Now 40. <laughs> oh, my God. It's 10 p.m. on a Wednesday. Um, We've covered a lot, Joe. We've covered a lot. We have. What are some things people can expect to see in your content over the next coming months? <sighs> Ooh, okay. So, A-League season starts or has started probably by the time this comes out. So... A lot of A-League content, sharing around that. Probably get some vlogs out if I can. Yeah. Um, also, depending on what happens with the National Second Division, probably get some videos out just letting people know what's going on with it because you you're not going to hear it unless you're reading every single article yeah. about Australian football. So keep eyes on Joe K Football and, uh, yeah, I'll keep everyone covered on the developments of the good, B-League. Yeah, good yeah. stuff. Yeah. Good stuff. I think, yeah. Why? Is there anything you want to see me do? Yeah, no, nah, nah, just second division stuff. Yeah. yeah and nah, just yeah. going to NPL clubs. That's what I'm, I'm keen to do that next year. There's so many clubs I missed out. I want to go, go to Bonnie Rig, Blacktown. I'll go on a Melbourne trip with you. Yeah? Fuck, you might oh. not like I don't know if you'd be too keen to stay with me for three days. <laughs> I'll be bouncing <laughs> off the walls. But yeah, no, nah, I'm just I'm just thinking like, Ben, you can come, but... <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm just thinking like it'd be good if we could just tear up a weekend where we do South Melbourne, Preston. Oh, mate. Yeah, yeah. the only thing would be, yeah. No, I'm not 100% down, but we just have to try schedule it. No, that's what That'd I'm saying. Thing, yeah. It's like you just got to. Just do two of them. Yeah, because ideally you want to see Heidelberg and South Melbourne play. Yeah. In Ideally they burst each other. Yeah. Then you have Preston play whoever they're playing in that division or if they're in MPL 1 next year. Yeah. And then who else is there? Brunswick, maybe. Brunswick. Who else is in Brunswick? Uh, Dan- oh, I want to learn about it too. Dandy really Dong, learned. Hume City. Yeah, Dandy Dong. Yeah, Hume City. Yeah. Oakley was, Cannons. Every club. Oh, Oakley. Yeah. Oakley always do well in the cup. Yeah. Or at least I feel like they always do well. That could be so wrong. It's like Heidelberg. I always feel like they do well. Yeah. I feel like they make the 16. Every single time. Yeah. yeah. I want to go check out that Metro Star, see what that's all about. Oh, in, in Adelaide or? Oh, are they in Adelaide? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, I had no idea where they were. From. I thought they were Melbourne for money. No, no, no. They're Adelaide. They're, they're a gun team though, that Adelaide, Metro Stars side. They're Who's a gun team. It? They've got this striker, James Temel, Temelkovsky, Temelovsky, something like that. Aussie Sorry. or? Uh, yeah, Aussie, but like Macedonian yeah. background, I think. He was, um, I think he was on trial at Adelaide United, but they didn't give him a contract, I don't think. Cool, cool. But he scored That's like. That's what's good about the cup Yeah. is we're getting these names. Yeah, so he... um. He scored a ridiculous amount of goals. Like his highlights, if you if you check him out, like he's scoring bicycle kicks, 
Yeah, first man. time volleys. Like he's a gun. He should be. He should be in the A League. Yeah, and there's lots of players you could say that about in the NPL. But yeah, yeah. That's we mad. move. Yeah. Look, that's it for ne- that's it for tonight. No doubt I'll have Joe back on. I thought I'd. I thought no better time to get my friend Joe on with the A League starting this weekend. By the time it comes out, yeah. oh, wait, does A League start Friday? Oh. This Friday. Yeah, so the A League, the first round of the A League's just gone past. Um, what are your predictions for it? Let's get up the fixtures. Okay, first game, I know off the top of my head, Adelaide versus Central Coast Mariners. Yeah, I think it's going to be. I think it's in Adelaide. I'm going to go three two Mariners. Last year, these were the best games in the league: Mariners versus Adelaide. Yeah. So yeah, Macarthur Brisbane. Ooh, Brisbane were good in the Australia Cup. Nah, Jed drew hat trick. 3-0 to MacArthur. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, I'm going, I'm going two all, two all. Good stuff. Jed Drew double then. Yeah. Melbourne City versus Western United. City. Ooh, City. You reckon? Yeah. I'm liking Western United this year. <laughs> I Daniel can't Pena, do it. Noel Bodic. It'll take a minute. It'll take a minute. Pena will take. You reckon? Yeah. Round, I, I put this on record. Round five to seven, Pena will just start. Start cooking. Yes. Yeah. yeah. He'll take a minute. Yeah. Okay. He'll take a minute. He he's so freakish. Same with Bodic. Just give him. Yeah, give him a bit. You can't judge anything before round five, but what you can judge is like, just the basics of like who who have you got in your team type of thing. Yeah, um, city city. So yeah. big blue. Oh, I reckon victory going to do well this year. They right. they came. Yeah, nearly got the spoon last year. It's nuts. But if you look at XG and that, they should have finished about fourth because nice. they just were no luck at all. Jake Brim is back. I'd go. I reckon. I reckon they're going to do them. I reckon they're going to victory win two one. With Sydney succeeding in the cup, they'll be brought back down to earth. That's how football yeah. works. Yeah, they're, they're, so, someone brings you back down. They've got a Brazilian striker, Fabio Gomez, who scored a penalty and a tap in, but everyone's giving him shouts for the Johnny Warren medal and that. But trust me, he's going to flop, and Melbourne victory win that game. Easy. Good stuff. Easy. We Wanderers supporters. <laughs> yeah, if you didn't. Wanderers know. Wellington. Ah, uh, four 0 Wanderers. Anderson. Antonson. I can't believe Wellington haven't brought back um, Singh. They didn't bring it. You know, they brought in two players this year and they lost about seven. Just playing kids. Yeah, playing kids, which I'm okay with, but I mean, I hope yeah. we just smash them. Um, Perth, Newcastle. Oh. Perth might be folded within two years. No, they've just got a new owner yesterday. Uh, Prime Land, something like that, from Victoria. They're like. Sounds capitalistic. <laughs> No, they, they got money. They got yeah, that's money, what I mean. Money. Yeah, 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 prime land. Yeah, sounds like they're fucking building ten thousand houses. <laughs> <laughs> um, so glory Jets. I'm going Jets two nil. I'm gonna go victory three. three so, so that's 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 um matter of fact after it's all happened. Yeah, it's good doing predictions after. Um, so Australia Cup replay. Raw Sydney. When's this? What's round two? We doing the whole season. Yeah, no, no, just round two because oh, okay. this will come oh, out yeah, yeah. leading oh. into round two. So um, people will obviously know the results by the time this comes out yeah. of round one. Okay. So round two, we've got Raw Sydney. Raw Sydney. So that's um, in Brisbane? Yeah. I'm, I'm going to go Raw, get revenge. Two yeah, one. same, yeah. same, something like that. Wellington, Perth. I'm going to go Wellington. Wellington. Yeah, I'll go Wellington, one nil. I'm going to go the, the rogue shout in the A-League all the time, like a four nil. Four nil. Yeah, just you know how Wellington do that shit. They could lose like yeah. six nil and next week. They score four. And you're like, yeah, All right, yeah. something's cooking. And then it's not cooking. The pan's not even on. Yeah, it's just that. Uh, <laughs> uh, Battle of Western Wanderers versus United in Parramatta. Yeah, yeah. I think Wanderers. I think we win again. But I think only like one or two nil. Yeah, it'll be close. Uh, Mariners Macarthur. That's a cook. That that That's game really they game. cook, man. Yeah. That was Jed scored the winner against the Qual double. That was a great game. That yeah. Because yeah. I was when Garang just was like, nah, stuff this. I'm going to take yeah. this. Yeah. And Jed Drew scored like last Mariners going to struggle with that come dog, man. And no, no Montgomery. That's the biggest loss by far. Because they, every single year they kept replacing these players. Like the year before last, they lost Rolls. Yeah. Then this year they've lost Triantis. And then you'd think they'd bring in someone new, but we've been got Montgomery gone. I don't know. They yeah, could drop off big time. Yeah. So you got Mariners, MacArthur. Uh, I'm still going to go Mariners. I think Mariners 2-0. Victory Jets. Victory. Victory by a lot. Victory 5-0. I don't like the Jets this year. I think they're going to get battered. Adelaide City. City. City win that. Adelaide haven't. Adelaide brought in one player. Who? Honey Cliff from oh, God. lower leagues of England, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that United, that A-League doing the, yeah, because he played in that Ravel Morrison Pogba team. 
Oh, did he? Did Isn't that leave? photo that guy that you know that photo of yes. Lingard, Morrison, Pogba? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's him. Oh, he's really? Fake up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Trust keep up to pull that one. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, that the links, that, the that, that whole content thing is drives me insane. What they try to relate to each other. Yeah, milk that engagement. But. Yeah. Anyway. Thank you for watching another episode of Hellas and Homies. I hope you enjoyed for all my football fans. And before I leave, those two books behind Joe are very much worth um, owning if you want to know more about Australian football. The, Li- the Death and Life of Australian Soccer by Joe Gorman, Katoomba native. And then The World Game, according to Les Murray. God rest his soul. Long live Johnny Warren. Long, long live Raleigh Rasich. Shout out Sam Kerr. Shout out Tim Cale. Shout out Harry Kuehl. Shout out Blacks on Redback. Shout out Jed Drew. See you next week.